welcome to Whose Turn Is It Anyway, a podcast all about board games and board gaming. This is a special expansion pack episode where we're going to talk all about our experiences of the UKGE 2023. Mm. I'm joined at the table by a lot of incredibly tired people. We've got JP. Hello. Adrian. Hello. Tambo. Hola. Curly. Hello. And of course, myself, Becky. So everyone... How are we all? Knackered, but, yeah. but smiling. Yes, I thoroughly agree with that one. My feet bloody hurt. My <laughs> feet hurt. I slept most of today. <laughs> lucky, <laughs> lucky you. Lucky yeah. you. Lucky, I lucky did not sleep you. most of today. No. When my alarm went off at six o'clock, I was just like, oh. Oh, yeah, you were an early oh, start, weren't you? Yeah. And I oh. thought that it was bank holiday Monday, and I thought, oh, I've got Monday off, it's fine. And then... Realised I didn't, which was upsetting. <laughs> which sucks. Uh, yeah. But we had a great time. <laughs> we did. It was absolutely worth it, yeah. I think. It always is. I think we say the same every year, right? Yeah. Which is, oh, it's tiring. You're on your feet, but you kind of come back smiling. It's having a blast, you know, hanging out with your mates. All weekend having laughs. Yeah. I've, I've booked my hotel for next year already. So, so you're I think, coming back? I think that tells you everything you need yeah. to know. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to do it. We're going to absolutely do it. We obviously met a few listeners, didn't we? We did. It was really, really great. I mean, one time they realised that we were there because they heard my laugh. Which, yes. Um, yeah, I don't know whether to be fl- flattered or like, oh no, <laughs> my geezer it- laugh outed us. <laughs> <laughs> my geezer laugh. Yeah, no, yeah. It, was, it was quite nice just to get... Um, yeah, for people to come on and say hi. So I thought we might just mention, do a few shout outs for you all. Um, and so who should we start with? It was Ben, wasn't ben. it? That came and said, oh, I thought it was you guys because I could hear Becky laugh. So hi, Ben. Really nice to meet you and your friend. Um, nice to have a little chat about, yeah, board game bling, as is my specialist yeah, <laughs> subject you're, area. You're going down some rabbit holes in that conversation. Yeah, 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 yeah. We were playing Earth at the time. Oh, ah, yeah, I that think. makes sense. Also want to say thank you to uh, Neil. So I was literally just finishing a chat with uh, David Turtsey. I was literally fanboying uh, he was for about fanboying five hard. or ten minutes. Because I'm like, <laughs> oh my God, it's an Aquini designer. Um, and I had a really great, great chat with him. And then Neil uh, came and tapped me on the shoulder and said, hello. And wanted to introduce himself because we've been speaking uh, kind of on socials and things. Neil's actually been encouraged to set up his own gaming group based on kind of listening to us chat. Oh, and what we did. And I just thought that was awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. Is. And so I was asking him uh, pretty much all about that and how he's getting on. And yeah, he's, he's growing it. He's starting to get a lot more games in. So that was quite nice. Just catching really? up with Neil, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And we saw Nicole as well, though I was really sad I didn't get to see Nicole. I wasn't there at You the weren't time. there, were you? No. We were playing a, a game, which we'll reveal soon uh, in the conversation. But yeah, she came and said hello, which again, awesome to meet yeah. you. Okay, it's just really nice, isn't it? You get yeah. to people speaking online through the socials and then you put faces to name. You know they've got faces and profiles, but it's just... It's nice to meet people in <laughs> yeah. real life, isn't it? IRL. Yeah. And um, at the end of the Just One... Uh, special event that Paul Grogan ran for charity Um, Pete came and introduced himself which was really really nice to see him Um, he came over and said hi to me and Adrian that was really nice and he mentioned that he was you know really upset when he heard about Chris which was a real really touching thing he hadn't been listening long and yeah it was really really sweet really comforting to hear yeah yeah it was so hi to hi to Pete yeah and his little girl so also on Saturday in Hall 1 I was there was a big crush Saturday was a busy day yeah I was going in one direction someone else was coming in the other direction just as we sort of got to the point of passing I think they'd see, noticed the logo on the shirt and said oh I listen to your podcast but we were pretty much going in opposite directions so I said thank you and kind of we got sort of forced in, away uh, from each other a little bit so whoever you are random person in hall one <laughs> i think about two o'clock on saturday <laughs> thanks for saying hello <laughs> sorry i didn't get to talk to you more yeah and we encourage that right so whenever we're at conventions expos um soon to be s and later in the year like if you kind of listen to the podcast and you think oh they look busy playing a game like just come and interrupt us, honestly. It, we it, won't, it won't affect my train of thought whether I no. win or not. And I could maybe use that as a reason why I didn't win. Oh, I would have won, but I was distracted by that really nice, you know, podcast listener. Yeah, please, <laughs> come, and, yeah, come and give me some more reasons why I can, why I can uh, lose, please. <laughs> Absolutely. So, no, thank you all. Thank you all. And uh, hope to meet many more of you soon. So, um, our whole weekend really started on the Thursday, didn't it? We all had a um, sort of, I don't know, not quite convoy, but we were all trying to get to the convention. Adrian beat us 
and got there really <laughs> early. Was he was yeah. super early. You yeah. were giving your friend Marcus a lift, weren't you? 6am. Yeah. Yeah. He was setting up a tournament um, for the Friday, so he had to be there for like midday. So yeah, it wouldn't have been my choice to get there for midday, but making sure to run him up in time. So yeah, I got there early. Yeah, you were had first on scene. Had yeah. a wander around, it was good. Yeah. And then Tambo, you were there with your brother, weren't you? You got there next, I think. Yeah, about, about three o'clock I was there, I think. Just just half two, three. Yeah. And he'd come all the way from Jersey, hadn't he? So yeah, he did. There. He flew over into the airport and I yeah, met him right back to Water's Hotel, bless him. So yeah. That's one really good thing about the location, isn't it, at the NEC. You're right next to the airport. Train station. Train station. It's yeah, great so for accessible. Great mm. for that. So me and you, JP, we were in one car having a karaoke. So we just basically sang the entire journey, think, didn't we? Yeah, I think it we was... chatted for about five minutes. Yeah. And considering our journey's about two hours and well, yeah, we, two and a half hours we went long, for it. It was good. We went we for had, it. We had good fun. I we think. went for, what was it, che- Cheesy Hits? Yeah, uh, che- was it called Cheesy Bangers on Spotify? Cheesy Bangers. <laughs> it might have been Cheesy Bangers. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Oh, that was mash and gravy, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> I love Cheesy Bangers. That's going to be your new nickname. <laughs> So cheesy bangers. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was cheesy hits. I don't think we should no, go down no, the cheesy, totally bangers. Cheesy, cheesy bangers. Cheesy bangers. Cheesy bangers. Right. Cheesy bangers. Cheesy bangers. Yeah. And um, Curly, you were in the car with Dan, weren't you? Uh, I would just want to point out I would have hated being in your car. That's like <laughs> hell to me. Yeah. <laughs> Karaoke the whole way up. Well, my God. Well, <laughs> me and JP had a great time. So yeah. I'm glad you did, but in my opinion, leave it to the professionals, you know? Speaking well, of professionals, you and Dan Upsey in the car. Dan, of course, from the 24-hour board game marathon.co.uk. Um, yeah, so you guys were in, in Dan's car, weren't you? So you uh, yeah. you drove up and then we all... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we had a nice drive, thank you. Yeah, it was all good. Did no, you have we, any um, cheesy bangers? No, we, well, no, actually, I mean, he said that I could have control of the, um, the music on so, the way So up. you had silence. silence. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, I'm into um, 80s synthwave at the moment, so he got subjected to that for, oh, did you? For, for most of the way up. You listened to The Midnight, did you? The Midnight, Gunship, um, what else was it? Um, a few others yeah. of similar type, and also a few, um, you know... Early nineties corkers in there. Nice. I think we had the Beastie Boys. Oh, we had a bit of overlap then because we had some early nineties. We had Dolly Parton, Dolly Parton, Rogers. Island in the Stream was our. I think that was our PS de Resistance. Like, oh my god! It's where, it's <laughs> it was where brilliant. the pinnacle wasn't. We hit the peak. Yeah, that was yeah. good. And we're duetting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we had good fun. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> enough, enough about the cheesy. Band. But yeah, yeah. But we, we talked most of the way. The music was a bit background. We just chilled. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. But yeah, we all got there. We um, stayed just outside um, the. Well, Birmingham Centre area, I guess. Sully Hall. Sully Hall. Yeah, Sully Hall. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, we got to go to the press event on the Thursday. So that was very exciting, wasn't it? Yeah. I think for us, it's uh, our first year uh, going as press. Normally, we go as attendees and just kind of experience the expo uh, like like it should do, really. But this, this year, we've got, uh, I don't know how we managed it, but we managed to get press passes. So that's Wee. all good. And But now we're a chuffed with that because we got to go to that press event and kind of get a little sneak preview of the show and meet uh, a lot of the, the kind of publishers and designers and, and people that were there and some friendly faces as well that we've yeah. uh, uh, spoken to and actually done episodes but first time meeting them in real life yeah. which was awesome um, so Chris Priscott uh, designer of Zuli we got to, to kind of meet and say hi which was mm. great yeah that was really really nice to kind of yeah he's just as nice in person as I expected him to be yeah yeah it was lovely absolutely I nearly kind of wasted their time, really, because I really wanted to sit down and beat their score. They had, like, a scoreboard for the league games. I was like, oh, I should really sit down a bit, but I know how to play it. I don't need it demoing. I just want to beat yeah. the score. And it was, <laughs> yeah, it's just a competition like, I was to just you. like, no, no, I mustn't, I mustn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, um, as we were sort of wandering up and down the, the aisles, there was a really interesting-looking game called Strong Point. Um by Strong Point Games Limited, nice and easy to remember, which is uh, like a quiz game, basically. Sort of a, a take on, I don't know, Trivial Pursuit, but better. There's no board. You haven't got to go around trying to land on the right thing. You're basically betting on whether your friend's knowledge is any good or not, mm. which is always fun because, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I absolutely embarrassed myself when I got <laughs> around on something like medicines and... It was something, something medical. Oh, yeah, medical, medicines and medical or something. I was like, and everyone betted me on five to get that and I got something like two. I was embarrassed at myself. <laughs> it was awful. But yeah, great shout out to the um, yeah, Strong Point. Strong Point Games Limited, really, really great game. I think it yeah. set us into the expo. It that, did. That game. Yeah, it really like, did. We, we finished the press event, I can't remember what time it was, like half eight, nine. 
we all kind of wanted to get an early-ish night ready for the the main day on Friday. And so we said, like, we didn't want to crack over a, kind of a, a really, really heavy board game. So we just said, yeah, let's whip, whip this uh, quiz game out. And we all just sat down and played it. It was great it was, fun. Yeah, it was a really yeah, great was fun. fun. Yeah, yeah, really, really good fun. enjoyed that. Yeah. Very good game. So yeah, you get points if you answer the questions correctly, but you also get points if you guess how many the other person's going to get. So that was really good. Yeah. Um, another card game that we um, were given was by a company called The Alphabet Runner, and the game was called Max Raz. So that was just like a little alphabet kind of game. I liked the solo mode of that, which is um, would be a really good way of, I don't know, killing some time when you say at an airport or somewhere that you haven't got a lot of space. So you just, yeah, matching letters and trying to make words up with the card you've got and the cards on the table. I spent a bit of time actually watching the awards ceremony. So they gave a lot of the awards out on that Thursday night. Um, and you can see, like, everyone's gathered around, like, oh, sort of seeing who's going to get what awards. Um, and then they proudly, understandably, displayed them around the hall during the rest of the yeah. weekend. But they even made a big deal out of the awards ceremony, like Cosmos won with Dodo Keeper. I can't remember what award they won. But they walked a Dodo, a bloke in a Dodo costume, <laughs> up to collect the award and stuff like that. So they were making it good fun, even though, you know, it was just for the press there. there was, it wasn't sort of open to the public at that point. They made a good sort of showing of it and made it good fun. Um, and then yeah, everyone walked away with their nice little sort of crystal trophies to put on their pods for the weekend. But it was yeah, it was good to watch and see all the designers and the publishers there. Yeah, so that kind of wraps up our Thursday really. Yeah. Went in, kind of got ourselves settled down, checked into the various hotels we we're staying in, and uh, yeah, got to that press event, and then played strong point. Went to bed, nice early night for everyone, or not. <laughs> it was supposed to be, but I, I, I kind of liken my first night of being away on a school trip because Dan, I, I've never kind of shared a room with Dan um, and we were just like two giggling scum. I was going to say you're both very silly boys <laughs> <laughs> we're just chatting for about two and a half hours I think you probably should get asleep but yeah <laughs> so very tight on the Friday <laughs> yeah, it's all good that's what it's about so from here we're just going to chat about our main expo exploits and the games yeah. and the many 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 games we've demoed played bought experienced bought um, <laughs> all of that lovely stuff who wants to go first I'm happy to go first. Go on, Curls. Well, as far as board games go, I made it my mission this weekend to pick up Dice Realms, which I'm really looking forward to playing. I saw it in the Bring and Buy. It was way too expensive in there, which actually is it's a bit of a theme in that place, apparently. Way too expensive in the Bring and Buy. I had a little look, really fancied it, and right, right, okay, I'm going to make it my mission to find it. So I told all of you guys about it and try and get you guys to try and find it for me. And um, yeah, eventually found it. Uh, through Adrian, keeping a sharp out eye on, on on Facebook, yeah, and picked it up, and he kindly grabbed it for me as well when he saw the guy randomly on one of the days. So, oh, you got yeah, really please, yeah, dice realms, yeah. Mm. yeah so, dice realms off off a guy off Facebook that Adrian pointed him out, and yeah, Adrian randomly bought something off him earlier on. Yeah, it just happened to be someone I agreed to pick up a game from on the Thursday evening. Um, so I bought Fifty First Eight from them, and then I noticed they were selling it, and so yeah, when I saw them picking up the stuff in the bring and buy to take out of it, I just sort of said, oh well, that's, that's my friend. Yeah. <laughs> I'll pick up the game for him. Yeah, forty pounds. I'm very delighted with that. Nice. I'm looking forward to play it. So um, it looked like, and I don't know whether this is right. I didn't do a lot of you know research into it or anything, but you change the as the game progresses, you change the sides of the dice. Yeah. So it kind of looks a little bit like Dice Forge to me, but with just a lot more to it, you mm. know. Um, so I'm really looking forward to giving that a go because that mechanic in Dice Forge is, for me, a really enjoyable one. So, yeah, really looking forward to playing that one. Um, as far as I didn't really demo many games per se because I tried not to um, do that as much this time. But we did get um, Earth to the Table, which was thoroughly enjoyable. I bought that on the... I was meant to be buying it on the... Uh, Friday, but they'd run out of copies, even though they said they'd put one back for me. But never mind. <laughs> they were a really friendly bunch. They, they? were like really a real friendly. family affair. The littlest girl, who I believe was called Dahlia, oh, she yeah. was like she seemed to be running the show. She had the iPad. She was like, you know what she was doing. yeah, she yeah. was all she over was it. Top of it. Yeah, yeah. They just seemed really, a really friendly, nice sort of family. Yeah. Which so was yeah, cool. I felt very, you know, Andy from. Whose turn is it anyway? Because I rocked up to the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Did you I, use your privileges? No, I rocked up to um, the. They've been sold out every day, immediately, yeah. basically. Met this probably and the I biggest hotness. Up, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And there was a queue of about thirty people on Saturday morning. I rocked up, I, and um, 
they kind of said, look, you know, everyone behind this point, there won't be any to sell. And I sort of said, actually, I should have one put back. And they went, oh, okay, skip the queue and go and, you know, go and collect your copy then. So I felt very, you know, rock and roll moment in there. Brilliant. <laughs> didn't, you need, didn't even need to name drop there, did they? Didn't no, even need no, to... no, not at all. I didn't name drop at all. I just had it put back. I mean, you know, it felt better than it actually was. Really. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we got to play that later on in the day. That was really good fun. Um, I got pipped to the post by young JP, who seemed to be on a roll that day, apparently. I was on fire. Yeah, beating me at all the games. So never let it be said <laughs> that I win all the games. Adrian quite often beats me, and JP was on a flipping roll. That upsets me. And he beat me on Flamecraft as well. He bought me the game for my birthday, and I was winning right near the end. I was starting to think, like, do you know what? I think I actually might have won this game. Old combo curly right at the end pulls out all the end game scoring. Oh, five for that. Oh, one of the three. For, oh, yeah, two. Mm. We beats me by maybe one or two points. Yeah. Really good game though. Fairly lightweight, I would say. Easy to understand and very beautiful. So it ticks all my boxes, quite frankly. Yeah, really nice. Really nice little kind of. I don't know. You don't collect. You, you have a few other cards in your hand, I guess, but you're not really set collecting. You're kind of changing things with other things on the board. Yeah. And um, yeah, collecting your resources, mm. upgrading resources. stuff. Yeah, yeah upgrading stuff, and then getting points for it. So, yeah. yeah, it's really, really sweet little game. Um, the guy from Lucky Duck Games showed um, us basically how to play very, very briefly on the Thursday. And uh, yeah, I'd had my eye on it. Curlington the third. What is my birthday? <laughs> so, thank oh, you. aren't you sweet? Thank you very much. Yeah, and then yeah. I whipped her at it. He did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did my beat at it, but it makes me feel better just to <laughs> rub it in a bit. Yeah. yeah. And then you bore her, and I whip you at it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. Well. You beat me by about twenty points. It was very upset. retribution. Right. <laughs> Funnily enough, though, what? my score—I beat my last score by over twenty. But you got absolutely really smashed it. It's because I was cheating. Were you? No, that yeah, wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> 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 I enjoyed it though. Uh, yeah. That was my first play. Right. I, I I really like it. I think it's a really solid game. I think it's got good aesthetics. I think it's good mechanically. It's chill. Yeah, it's just chilled. It's yeah. chilled. Um, mm. I don't think, you know, if I'm being honest, it's never going to push out Terraforming Mars for me, nah. but it's it's a really good game. Really yeah. thoroughly enjoyed it. And I think the theme is quite um, accessible, yeah, I would yeah. say. You know, as a, you know. So, yeah. Give one thing I liked about it is you're never bored either because you're always doing something on everyone's turn. Love that. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's no downtime. The best, yeah, there's no, no downtime. Yeah, it? you're right. And it's, I suppose the only negative is, well, it's not negative because you need to pay attention because mm. you just get out of sync. Yeah. You're like, has yeah. everyone done that red action? God, I've not done my red action. Then. Yeah. Um, but it's actually a good thing because you're right, you're constantly keeping your eye on the ball, going, please pick red, please pick red. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and they go, damn, no, you went yeah. teal or whatever yeah. the colour was. But, uh, but yeah, no, it, it's cool. I, I like the the, the tableau um, uh, kind of the same manipulation, but the fact you can kind of slide it around up or down, left, right. Uh, although I don't think I did much of that in my game. I do. I, either I was lucky or I kind of just. I think if you plan it properly, you don't always need to. Yeah, well, because you activate the, um, uh, the whatever action you select right as a color, and then you activate like reading left to right from top to bottom. Um, I kind of thought, well, if we're doing that. You kind of want to gain stuff higher up the tableau and you want to be spending it lower down is what my brain was telling me to do so i kind of naturally placed the cards or planted the oh. cards um in in those areas but yeah i was more thinking into it that that would make more sense if i'd have done that yeah put the collecting at the top and the spend at the bottom mm. i'm seeing flaws in my flaws in my but game it depends, now doesn't it because yeah, you've yeah. got like terrain cards that will say put things in a row or column and you'll get bonuses or, or victory points or whatever. Mm. So, yeah, it just depends, doesn't it? That's I think card Sprouts makes. really paid off for you, didn't they? Oh, it's sprouted all over the show. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I've already bought some blinged sprouts, by the way. Did you? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I found some really are. beautiful what? little... Little Brussels sprouts? No, no, little glass leaves. Oh, they're really very beautiful, sprouts. and I've already done, yeah, I've already bought them. I think it's got a lot of um, capacity for expansion as well, hasn't it? Yeah. Like new cards, yeah. and I think it's got a really, yeah... How about you, T? What was your favourite highlights games? Um, the whole thing was my favourite. It was my first experience. So it was the, the first day was quite overwhelming. So I didn't do any much demoing. I was just a lot of wandering and just getting your bearings ready. Yeah. Because yeah. it, it was a bit overwhelming the first day. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't sure how things worked, what they did. But um, just watching what other people were doing and just setting down games. And yeah, I think I did about three laps of the whole hole, I think, until <laughs> I met you guys then and me and my brother. But yeah, no. Um, Highlight of it, well, my favourite game, I, well, one of my favourite, there was actually so many, was um, Fire Tower. 
which ah. was like, yeah, I sat down and we, we got it on the last day, on the Sunday, finally got a seat because it was always quite busy, but there's only two little tables for it, so yeah. you could easily walk past it. Yeah, um, yeah it was really, really good. Um, it was a, just a, a ball and table of the forest, and in the middle was the eternal flame, and you spin the compass, wind compass, so whichever's found west, you know, north, south, south, east, whichever the wind was facing, on the beginning of every turn, they put these little fire markers on the board from the start, from the eternal flame, and the idea is you have a tower each, and it's, you try and burn down each tower, each other's of this tower. Oh, you're literally trying to set fire set to the tower. tower. Yeah, so you're trying <laughs> nice. to set each other's tower on fire, and, yeah. you know, and the last one wins, basically. Um, yeah, so you, you you put your fire count down where the wind's in it. That's the first thing you actually do, and you've got cars in your hand, you've got cars that make more fire, you've got um, cars that put out fire, you've got cars that put like, defensive barriers down for your tower. Um, and you've got these hawk cars, which is an expansion for it, I believe they're called firehawks, which actually apparently are a real thing in Australia, which I didn't realize. They fly down and pick up bits of fire and to bring out. Um, oh, really? Yeah, bring out the little, their, their food, you know, so the, okay. all the little rodents run out when you, they start setting fire, so they move fire to other places. Ah. Apparently, it's a real thing. I didn't Google it, but the guy, oh, Ryan, who was the publisher, said it's actually a real thing. Wow. So I thought oh, that's quite interesting. So um, you put these firehawks in and you can move one fire. By the way, you like the fire to like really. I remember seeing the actual stall in the hall and it had like as it say did it say fire tower in like kind of flickering yeah flickering yeah, 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 yeah I remember yeah. seeing that it's just yeah. yeah it's like almost they looked almost glowing as every time I was walked past I thought no wonder they no wonder they're busy all day is yeah. because it really popped off the table that game yeah yeah um yeah it was really good and it's not an elimination game either so when your fires burn which we didn't realize at the end uh, you do a bit like you do a nemesis you get a evil dice and then you roll it and you have an action cards and then you, you do what it says in the cards, so you make more fire. And oh, then, right. you become the fire. Yeah, you become the <laughs> fire, basically. And then um, if the other person goes out, those two got wet together and to win it, so the bad guys to win it, they've got to eliminate the last two at the same time, on the same turn. Oh, okay. And if there's one winner at the end after a whole turn, they have the win. That sounds fun. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. I never good thought, fun. I've seen it, and yeah. now you've explained it, like, I'm actually more excited to kind of play it and give it a go, because I'll be honest, it's not something I thought... It right. looked a bit gimmicky to me, yeah. so to hear it actually has a little bit of kind of bit of context yeah, behind yeah, it. Bit yeah. Of context. Yeah. 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 I'm not sure how OP it is when you when you become the bad guy because it seemed to end very quickly once that happened and they won it. But yeah, no, there's a co-op version where you, you protect the uh, long life trees or something. You got to protect them from the fire, and there's a solo version as well. Nice. So it sounds really good. Yeah, it's not a long play. It's about 40, 50 minutes, I reckon, on the table. So yeah, well, that's yeah. cool. That was one of my favourite games. Nice, nice. One of the major. Yeah. Are they, is it actually available now? Or? No, they've run out of, they haven't got any more print, but I've, they're going to send me an email when they get it back in print in, the, in Europe. Oh, so they cool. reckon, um, I think it was, I can't remember, July, well no, late in the year, or maybe even next year. It's quite a while, unfortunately. And they sold out on the first day of all their books. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I've heard that from a few different vendors, mm. that they sold out on day one of stuff, so. Yeah. Do you yeah. think it was like, has customs been really bad this time, or...? I heard, mind clash. Yeah. I, heard, I heard a few <laughs> mention of customs, but it just was busier than last year. Okay. Yeah. All around it seemed. So a lot of people were talking that especially the Saturday was a lot busier than yeah. they were expecting. Well, they actually said it was 16% higher than the record attendance, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. And I guess... had uh, 50, about 52,000 visitors and 32,000 were unique over the weekend. Wow. So 32,000 different people had entered wow. that wow. Um, hall space over the three days. And I think most of them there on the Saturday. Saturday was a big day. Yeah. 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 yeah, definitely. I suppose companies aren't maybe in this kind of financial climate going to sink absolute loads of money into something if it isn't 100% surefire. Yeah, with last year not being... Being a bit quieter, yeah. I think a lot of them might have been a bit more cautious. But yeah. hey, if you can sell through all your games and still have people interested and know that you're going to get more around mm -hmm. them, yeah, like that's in the future. That's good for the publishers. Yeah. Definitely. Mm. How about you, then, Adrian? What was your highlight so, game? I did a lot of uh, sort of sit down demos and trying stuff, especially with JP. So I'm going to talk about the one that I didn't actually uh, sit down with JP for, which was Lacana. So Lacana is the um, the trading card game that's coming from Disney. Um, and I sat down and I played with uh, with Marcus, who's a big trading card game fan, and I played against a Time Lord, which was um, really interesting. Um, so he's got some he's got some card game skills as well. For those who didn't see it, there was a lot of videos over the weekend, but they had some Daleks um, and some Time Lords walking mm -hmm. around with them doing a bit of sort of cosplay, cosplay kind stuff, of, which yeah. was good. But yeah, stood in a queue and there's, oh, I've got a Time Lord, I'm playing a game of Lakana with. It was an interesting <laughs> mix. 
the the game has some really sort of solid mechanics. You you have your normal hand of cards, and they've got um, strength and defense, and they've also got something called Lacana points. At the start of each turn, you pick a card, you show it to your opponent, and you place it face down, and that becomes your I can't think what they call them now. I think they call them ink points or something like that. So the idea is you're drawing these characters into life. So that becomes your ink points, and so because you're placing them face down on the t on the table, that like you get. You're allowed to place one face down, see they they stay in play constantly, so you're slowly getting an increase of, of these ink points over the game. And then you play the characters using those ink points or items or actions, and you've got kind of two things you can do. You can use them to so you sort of turn them sideways, um, so exhaust them, whatever term you want to use, to gain Lacana points, which is how you win the game. So many Lacana points wins I think it was 20 Lacana points wins you the game. They definitely avoided certain words because it's Disney, right? So they avoided certain words, but you can then challenge, I think was the word, another character who is exhausted. So if they've been turned to the point either to gain Lakana cards or because they've um, challenged someone else, you can then challenge that and then you can knock them out mm -hmm. um, and, and they go into your discard pile. There's some really solid stuff in there. We did see only like a handful of cards and as always with these trading card games, they're built around what cards are in the deck and what cards become available, what expansions become available. Yeah. So we played with two demo decks that only, there were 60 cards there, but they look like, I think they look like very basic versions of cards that they may tell me it's different, I don't know. But certainly the cards I had in hand were very basic things, which is great because it's a family game, but also I'm intrigued from a trading card game to see what other mechanics and that they put in the game. But yeah, really enjoyable. Glad that I managed to get into that because that had a long queue all weekend. Yeah, I wanted really to kind long. of check it out and I just thought, you know what? There's always a queue there. Yeah, always a queue. Always a queue. All, like almost three sides of the square yeah. little area was, was queue. And I just thought, yeah, I, I yeah. don't think I can... And, okay. and props to the demo as they were going, like, the, we were there on the Sunday morning and she could barely talk, bless her, the person <laughs> oh, demoing. Um, <laughs> but she did, a, she did her best job and, you know, again, they use, they use languages, like I say, you, you, um, it, when you first bring a card in, you can't use it that turn. And it's called wet ink, so you've just drawn it, oh, so you okay. can't use it. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah, and all those, like... That language that's in there is just brilliant and very sort of thematic to Disney. Yeah. So, yeah, so I'm intrigued. I'll be keeping an eye on it. Nice. Definitely. It does look pretty. I'm not going to lie. Like the cards. I've seen mm -hmm. the, they announced the cards for it like months ago, didn't they? Yeah. That yeah. it was coming. And it's like, ooh, no, stop it. Stop getting into more card games. <laughs> Play the ones you've got. Like Adrian says, though, with that kind of thing, it's, it's great to have a good look and a good aesthetic, but actually, it's all about the game. Yeah. So we don't know enough yet about the game to know 100% about it. So, you no. know, wait and see what the overall kind of, you know. I think it's it probably fair to say that it will be solid enough to draw in families. Mm -hmm. It's whether it makes it to more competitive scene. Yeah. But I, I've seen some family oriented trading card games that are not well built. Um, and this one actually, for me, felt like it was going to be well built enough that families can get into it. It's just whether then sort of the adults you know and yeah. the, the tournament scene or competitive scene kicks off with it that will be dependent upon the cards that come into the game nice. but yeah no, it was good how about you then jp what was your best game well best game it's quite hard to, to answer the best game <laughs> um i've enjoyed so much but i think the one that kind of stuck in my mind i'm actually going to talk about mycelia um, oh yeah that looked beautiful so mycelia is uh it's a mushroom strategic mushroom game which is you know theme wise is different yeah, yeah definitely. um and uh the designer uh, jack neville uh we we i've been in conversations with actually for a few weeks and we managed to organize a, a game on the friday evening after the kind of halls had shut and we'd gone into the open gaming area which was great for for him to do considering he spent eight nine hours demoing and talking about his own game for them to go you know what I'm going to do in the evening on my, on my night off is I'm going to play the game uh, with <laughs> us so thank you Jack for, for doing that but yeah what is it Mycelia is a um, kind of a, a, an area control um, kind of resource kind of collecting uh, kind of management game I suppose and it's got quite a unique theme in the fact that you control your uh, mycelium network um, of, of basically the mushrooms and you start with what's called a mother mushroom, which I think we all have different nicknames for uh, throughout the course of the game, which you can kind of move around on these triangle uh, tiles. And they're not look. just triangular tiles, they're beautiful, they are beautiful triangular yeah. tiles. They're, they're really like pretty and, and, and all kind of coloured differently because of the different resources that you need to collect. And 
So essentially, your um, sending out your spores from from your mushroom, and the the wind can carry your spores across the the board in in various different directions. Not always the directions you want. <laughs> Seems like you. <laughs> Seems like with you, never yeah, the direction yeah, you want it. Basically, <laughs> off the board. Oh, here we go. Um, and then, but you, you can use those um, those spores to, to kind of spend them and, and fruit the actual mushrooms, which are these cards. And I have to say, the artwork in in this game, which is all done by Jack. It's beautiful, like hand drawn mm. and the mushrooms, all various different shapes and sizes. Like even I, I was like, how many of how many types are there? <laughs> Jesus, yeah. so many, and they all have um, kind of various different effects and, and and powers when you decay them. And that's kind of the point. You're sporing from the fruited mushrooms to get to a point where they decay. And when they decay, you kind of take the cards and you slot them under your, your player board, and then they might have an ongoing game effect, or there might be an instant effect where you can eradicate spores from the board from your opponents or whatever different things that can happen so it builds your your engine um what surprised me about the game was kind of how uh kind of in your face you get with your opponents yeah. um <laughs> so i thought it'd be quite a pleasant game we're just doing, you know being mushrooms we're doing this we're doing that and actually what we found in our game and maybe it's because you know me curly dan um and jack were playing we just <laughs> just kind yeah. of got in each other's grills didn't yeah, we? we went for it yeah. we went for it um and yeah, it was just great fun. And the, the kind of crux of it is that you have to kind of have a continuous network of your spores and mushrooms and they all have to be joined together for you to be able to spend resources halfway across the board and back. So people can kind of just cut your network in half and take a spore off and suddenly the whole thing collapses because you need the red from the left side of the board and maybe some greens on the right. But you know, if you're relying on that single connection, you you're knackered so mm, you're done for yeah i was speaking to him and he's a graphic designer by trade yeah. and that just absolutely comes across in these cards everything you know from the font to the kind of color palette he's chosen it's it's incredibly beautiful yeah it's it's kind of on a par to me like with that you know how gorgeous the wingspan cards yeah are. oh 100 yeah. it's, yeah. it's on a par absolutely 100 like, but it's mushrooms yeah yeah, yeah. um yeah it's done an excellent job with it I really enjoyed the game. And it kind of it makes a very... I know that you said it's you guys ended up being quite, not combative, but sort of a bit aggy. Basically, aggy mushrooms. Yeah, really. yeah. Uh, yeah. But the the game is very kind of zen looking and, mm. and yeah, really, really good. My problem was with that game is that I got a bit obsessed with uh, getting a jack-shaped designer scalp. Um, as a, you know, but then JP snuck up and flipped in and whipped the victory from out under my nose. That's fun. So, yeah, yeah, great. I honestly uh, didn't think I had it. Yeah, I was just doing my thing, and I oh, just you did. You started so slowly. I, I kind of like no offense. I kind of yeah. really often was concentrating on Jack, <laughs> and I was like, and then yeah, and you I dealt in. with Jack, and then JP ran in, and you know, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Snaffled the victory. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> no, you good. did great on that game. It's good fun. Yeah, it really was good fun. It was interesting way. talking to Jack, and he was saying that um, people play it in different ways. Like he was saying, it's. It, we were talking about how many times he'd played the game and, mm -hmm. and he said he really likes playing games with groups of people to see the kind of the dynamic of the group. So he said something, I mean, he, I think he got the dynamic of our group pretty quickly. Yeah, it didn't but take he said long, that, did it? You know, a, you know, some people sort of, they stay on their little half of the board and they're doing their little thing and they occasionally, yes, might sort of almost accidentally sort of affect someone else's play. Whereas... Our group is kind of like, right, take that. I'm having that spore over there. Like that's yeah. Nadja you for that. And it was, yeah, it was fun. It did look. I didn't play. I was a, a bystander. You were but tired, it, weren't you? I like, was you, absolutely you were hit a wall mortal. By yeah, point. I'd gone by about <laughs> eight o'clock. Yeah, I'd had my dinner and was uh, basically done, really. Yeah. Out for the count. It's fair. It's fair. But no, check out my silly. It's coming to um, crowdfunding or Kickstarter. I think later in the year. I think September. I believe I, I might be wrong. Said, yeah, but yeah, kind of awesome. around that that time. So yeah, it's one to keep an eye out for. So definitely. Yeah, had some. Um, he had some good talk going on about it. Actually, there's quite a few groups on Facebook. He was, that was like saying it was. He was really rammed. This store was rammed. Yeah, yeah, busy yeah. weekend. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I caught him on the Sunday and on the way out and said, "How are you going on?" I was like, "I'm so tired." <laughs> <laughs> I, I genuinely think it's my my tip for the hype game of next year. Yeah, I think yeah. it's going to be in the hotness, along with um, hegemony. However, that's meant to be said. Hegemony. Hegemony. I think that's it's hegemony. What, though, that's isn't what it? Google says because I thought it was hege hegemony, but apparently it's hege hegemony. Hegemony. Well, I think the US call it hegemony. In Europe, it's hegemony. Oh well, whichever, well, you tell us, listeners, whichever side of the pond you're on, that I reckon is going to be a big, 
a big it, hit. It, it is already. It is already, yeah, yeah. for sure. It's, uh, we, we got a demo of it. We did. I was ready to be done with asymmetric games, I think, <laughs> quite frankly. Um, because whenever I've played them, I've normally just felt like, oh, there's one side that's doing something really specific and it always seems to get the rub of the green early on and then steamrollers everyone else. This was definitely more interesting and there was the... Um, ecosystem of playing so for those who don't know it's kind of representing you've got one person represents the state and then you've got one person representing capitalists and then middle class and working class buildings are coming out like so different companies are coming out and workers are being placed there's taxes to pay and you get to vote on different um, whether you know healthcare goes up or down and it affects every player and every player will have a different feeling about sort of how the, th the different ones interact. And we only played a couple of turns and bless him, the guy, <laughs> the guy who showed us was like, I'm on lunch now, I'll hand you over to someone. And then whoever was looking after him came over and went, you're not on lunch, let's be a bit of a mix up. Yeah. We've got your breaks mixed up. Can you sit down and <laughs> show him someone else the game? Oh, bless him. Yeah, and yeah. he did a great job of still putting together a really interactive um sort of experience and showing showing the He's game still being enthusiastic he was, as well yeah he yeah. did a great job of it um and sort of he sided with the state a little bit with jp i didn't mind and showed him how it was played because he <laughs> yeah. needed the help less no he didn't he did i did, it, I like, did. jp I, did really well out I, of it i didn't know what i was doing um and yeah i was really impressed <laughs> they'd already sold out by the time we got a demo midday on saturday wow yeah. um but yeah i was really impressed with that as an asymmetric game and I, as i say i'm i was about ready to sort of hang up my asymmetric game playing time because I've just not always had the best experiences with them recently. Mm. And that has kind of sort of corrected the course back to maybe there are some asymmetric games out there that will do well. I really enjoyed it. It's a theme I couldn't care less about, if I'm being honest. Like for me, oh great, politics. And let's, let's vote on policies and things. It just doesn't interest me. But for some reason in this game, you can't help but role play it you can't help like I was the state and then the Adrian was the yeah, as you said working class and you were just like you know power to the people like we need to make sure we're protecting people get the trade unions um, or worker <laughs> unions all set up and I'm like hey let's just, let's just make sure everyone gets a piece of the pie and let's get taxes risen so I can get lots of money which is what I was doing literally just spamming uh, taxation on <laughs> all the other players which they loved absolutely <laughs> loved it uh, especially Davey, he was a, a catalyst. Oh, he just wants brilliant. to make money and he's just having to <laughs> fork out all of his profits to me and like, thank you very much. <laughs> um, but yeah, you just can't help but get into it when you have all these cards, don't you, that you play, as well as doing your, like, your basic actions. And yeah, it, it's just really thematic. And like I so, say, for me, the theme, it's not my favourite, but it, it really works. It, it really works. worked. And you don't need to have an in-depth knowledge of like social economics or, or anything or economy it just kind of get it made sense and, and it yeah. felt like when we sat down he was originally talking about it the, the person who demoed it it felt like it was going to be sort of the working class versus the capitalists and the state and middle class in the middle and that was true to some extent but the the middle class and the state had enough push and pull but actually there was quite often times when I still felt like I was fighting against them as the working class mm -hmm. and I could see it on Davy as well so it wasn't necessarily just here's your middle ground it was definitely the sort of the ecosystem sort of pulling in different directions I, I was really impressed yeah I think depending on player count if you just do two it'll be working class versus the capitalists and then third player will be the middle middle class and the fourth player plays the state so I think you kind of have to play it in that order for that player count possibly I, I don't think you can do a two player with the state versus the working class and there's AI I think they were saying there's yeah. automata decks that sort of show replace the other people if you haven't got oh, four okay. players around yeah. Which maybe allows you to, to play some of those um, kind of other factions. Don't really want to call them factions, but you know what I mean. So, yeah. We also on Saturday stopped by uh, Molinarius Games. They are producing a game at the moment called Ocean Pods. It's a beautiful game. Again, you talked about sort of mycelia, those white cards with a lovely image on them. Exactly the same, but with uh, pods of whales and different sea creatures. And it's also got these beautiful um, sort of screen printed dice that have different food types on it. What you're doing is you're rolling a handful of dice and um, some of them will come up with pollution. 
and some of them will come up with food, uh, uh, the food types. So you're trying to collect points essentially by feeding these different animals, but there's also, if you try and get too far ahead, people will spam pollution into the ocean so that no one can win it. So you're kind of trying to play that game of making sure that you're building up your pods as well as um, making sure there's not enough pollution in there. It's coming to Kickstarter soon. What they are also doing is they are giving a certain amount of the money they make away mm -hmm. to different... Um, I can't remember the specific name of the charity. I, I don't think it was named. I think it was uh, just basically... Environmental, environmental charities yeah. about keeping the oceans clean and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, so great cause as well. That's, so that's coming to Kickstarter. They had a few to sell. They looked like they were nearly sold out when I went around yeah. on the Saturday evening. So I don't know how many games they had left. But uh, a great game, and we're going to hopefully get a game of it to the table soon because they were kind enough to, to give us a copy to preview. Yeah, we well, said this looks like Becky. Yeah, how, Becky's as soon as you bought the little box out on the table when we all kind of gathered together in Hall 3, I was like, oh, ooh. Nice. I think I probably made the woo yeah. noise, which is my famous grandma noise. Yeah. Speaking about grandmas, I uh, took my grandma trolley, my little nana you did. trolley. Yeah. <laughs> That's oh, the start of the show. That was brilliant. Mm. Not going to lie. Absolutely taking that next year. So it's not a paisley, you know, proper grandma one. It's quite a funky. You need to get a photo of this grandma trolley and get it on the socials. <laughs> <laughs> Give its own Instagram account. Yeah, it, yeah. it was. The Hooster Granny trolley. <laughs> I'm loving it. It was very useful. I mean, you know, you, you saw people walking around with those big, giant, like, I don't know, little dumper truck looking. Yeah. You know, like almost thing that you'd have on the back of your car for like your little, what are they called? Not trailers. Trailers, no. that's right. Like a little handheld pull-along trailer that you yeah. might put a, a very large child in or something. People were bringing them around. I thought, blimey, taking people's legs out with that. My little granny trolley, nippy as. Loved well, it. Well, at least you weren't one of those idiots with the big square bags on their back that you nip <laughs> people with as you turn around and stuff. Thanks. It's all right for me, because I'm sure. <laughs> that was one of them as well, mate. So, one big so rucksack on I, I do have to apologise. I definitely took out one person. Um, so for the most of it, I put all of my stuff in the shop and drop. It was £3 a day, drop all your stuff off, all that lot. So I did most of that. On the Sunday, I didn't want to do that, so I wore it on my front so that I could control it better. <laughs> but on the Saturday... Like a robot, like, pregnant yeah. baby. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah I did. I, because I was really aware, and I'd been caught a couple of times by people swinging bags over their shoulder, yeah. and I felt really aware of it. So I did my best. On Saturday, as we were leaving the expo, we were walking along, and my feet were killing me, and I had my backpack on, and I turned to say something to, I think it was Marcus and Dan, about how much my feet hurt, and I took out this poor woman walking in the other direction with it. She squealed, because I like, oh. probably hit her with it. There's a lot of weight behind those uh, And yeah, so uh, if that was you, I'm really sorry. Um, but yeah, it was. there was a lot of sort of bumping into things with with bags from various people and all that lot it was a bit of a problem let's but... face it Adrian if she was a listener she'd probably stop being a listener yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, like, I've just been hit by Adrian from Who Turns Eight Podcast you know I'm really sorry <laughs> I was tired and what not you know, all day I'd been thinking about the bags I'd been carrying yeah. especially on the Sunday when I uh, had the big um, the big board game tables board game bag mm -hmm. and yeah Saturday just my brain wasn't engaged we were going for food my feet hurt and I just turned to say something and didn't even think about it and just wiped some some poor person. See, and all I did, I wanted to abuse Adrian a little bit with a sarky comment and it turned out to be true. Yeah. <laughs> did you not know this happened? No. No, I didn't either. No. No. I really wanted to say sorry because it was. I felt really bad about it, and I'd seen other people doing it and not say sorry or anything. And I also didn't say sorry. I at was going to say normally you do it at the time, right? Yeah, I I also didn't because I. Not it took me to. They were gone. They'd managed to sort of write themselves and get off before I'd even realised what had happened. And I was just like, oh no. I think they ban them at Essen, don't they? Do they? Yeah, I think large bags for that reason. Yeah. What about granny trolleys? I think you're all right with that. Yes. I think that'll be a rather I, specific. I think one. by Essen, we're going to hit a thousand followers for the Granny Trolley account. <laughs> oh, so, uh, I think it'll be, he'll have his own path. I think. <laughs> so it's all good. Cool. What's next? Yeah, that's right. So I played um, Apex Legend as a demo. Um, I'll have to thank Davey for that. That was very interesting. I haven't really played a board game, but first person shooter. So people don't know who Apex Legends is. It's a first person shooter. I've never played the computer game, but I've seen it and I've, I've heard about it. I played it once. Yeah. And I was crap. Right, yeah, well, I'll be crap on. <laughs> I used to be good when I was younger with, with the reactions for the yeah, first person shooters, but now I'm just rubbish. No. But um, yeah, so it was me, Marcus, my brother, Chris, and uh, we were actually one lucky guy was random joined us because um, we couldn't get a fourth, so one, one guy was lucky. Can't remember his name, so I'm sorry if you're listening. Yeah, it was really good. Um, my favourite part of the whole thing was 
the build up of the weapons, I think, was yeah. really, really clever. When you put, you yeah, pick out all your rare tokens, you've got more ultra rare, rare is it? And then you've got normal tokens, you pick out the bag, I think. And you, you, you pick out one ultra rare, two rares, and about four normals at the beginning of the setup, I think it is. And then you um, pick out, you have four weapons, choose two. Mm-hmm. And then you, um, yeah, you put them down and you try and match the symbols, which is quite, because you're a bit time scheduled, like rushing around, and the guy was trying to explain everything. And it, it made sense near the end, but it was it was really well demoed. I'm not saying it wasn't, but yeah. it was just quite, there was a lot going on. They're I remember playing before. Yeah, they're cramming lots in, yeah, lot in very quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, um, that was a really interesting part of it. And then obviously everything visually looked good. The 3D model, there's a 3D table of the levels and the, the cardboards, buildings and the, the characters and the, the bombs, everything looked stunning. Mm-hmm. It looked really, 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 really good. Um, my favorite part of the whole thing was the combat part, the firing and doing the damage. Yeah. Yeah. It was 100%. very, very 100% clever. Yeah. Um, I don't know how to really explain it, but if you imagine like you got zero in the middle of a row of one to six, I think it was. And then before they got five, four plus fives, and then when it, on your weapon it says you draw four cards, so and you've got a hit of sixty five, so that's the number you've got to hit to, for your gun to hit or make do seven damage, for instance. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you draw a random card, and if it's got sixty, you you under, but you can put modules to plus five it. Yeah. And then if you go draw another card, it goes up, so you get minus ten already on the board on your number because of the stability of the gun because you're like shooting up in the air because it's just going crazy isn't yeah, it yeah the longer you're firing, firing and that's what makes it really really resistant really so you get yeah. more minuses on your number mm-hmm. but if you put upgrades on your gun you can start on the plus fives which means you've got plus five on your number to begin with and then again keep drawing from that point and it, it takes just, longer to get to the, long minus the number and you get the you're hit and further hits. up the track yeah. yeah yeah it was really really clever that was i mean that, that didn't impress me. Um, I didn't quite get the one way because you can actually stack up your numbers as well on the shotgun. one round. So if you've got a shotgun, essentially it's two cards that you put on the same slot. Yeah. So if you draw a 45 and a 65 and you need a 55, you've still got one hit, That's but it. they're both getting the plus five or the zero. So rather than going down the track, zero, minus five, minus 10, what, or minus five, minus 10, whatever it is, you're essentially putting two cards on one so that your accuracy depletes less quickly and if you've got right, a stability yes, stabilizer on there it stays better for longer um yeah i used a i played a demo of it as well um not at the expo we'll talk about that in a second but mm-hmm. uh, i i took a shotgun in one of them deliberately to see how that worked and it is a good mechanic because it allows you or it's a good option to have because it allows you to to not get those minuses as quickly mm. and with the deck of cards the way it's set up it means that you stay sort of yeah, more accurate for longer, which yeah. is really useful. Yeah. Um, throwing a grenade was fun as well, because I threw <laughs> yeah. a grenade. And now that's the same when you're doing your damage cards, there's these little arrows on the cards. So you put a point where your grenade's on the land, and then you draw the card, and these little arrows is where your grenade's going to roll. Mm-hmm. And that was very clever. Yeah. Yeah, so if I want it here, but then, it, oh no, it's actually coming back towards me. So <laughs> There's yeah, always a chance. chance that it could happen, which is yeah. actually what could happen. You actually, when you're playing a computer game, you throw it against the wall and it comes back to you. It's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's happened to me in video games. So yeah, yeah that was really cool. Um, yeah, it was really good fun. I'm, I just remember Marcus coming up to me with a big old sh- coming up and he put a massive shield around him and I, we couldn't hurt him and he was just like an expert here. Then he ran up at me, smashed me against the wall and shot me in the face pretty much and killed me. Yeah, <laughs> he, he yeah. played Gibraltar, which is who I, yeah. yeah. I played as well when I played yeah. it. Yeah, yeah I, very good character. I played the character of the smoke, I think. I never got yeah, to play the smoke. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they've all got cool, really cool special abilities as well, which was good. Each character has their individual thing, doesn't it? Yeah, they're all unique. They've got their own like feet cards that you can play that just really leans into the asymmetry of what the character does. And and it's just, I think when you're playing your first game, it's probably not going to be fast paced. But when you know what you're doing, you're going to zip round, just you know, move, move, shoot, bang, but move, jump up here, do this, do that, and it's going to feel very kind of battle royale death match if you like that kind of sort of thing so yeah yeah if someone's got a couple of shots on you or the whole team can get shots on you you feel doomed yeah, in that yeah. moment which is exactly how it should feel yeah you might not make many shots over a game again you'll i think you'll build up that speed as you're playing but as soon as if a couple of people from one team have got eyes on you and they can shoot you you feel in danger mm-hmm. <laughs> you really do feel like this could be me done but you do come back so if you get shot you lose a victory point so everyone starts with a victory point in the in the base uh, battle royale sort of version you lose that victory point but you do get to come back you just yeah you respawn don't you you mm. respawn you're just not worth any victory points and the, the one with the most victory points at the end wins so you're kind of trying to take out both of the opposing players so they can take out one person as many times as they like they're yeah. only getting one victory point out of it so they, you, you end up getting you know killed you've got nothing to lose you've got nothing to lose like, right that's it. that's it I'm getting up in your it. face now <laughs> and yeah unleash hell um, but yeah we, we 
we kind of uh, were fortunate when we were Adrian because me and you got to, to play it um, on the Gaming Wars channel uh, quite a few weeks ago. Uh, we wanted to mention it on this, even though you know we did play it at Expo, and we purposely said, no, we're not going to play it at Expo because we played it and wanted others to to kind of experience it. And I was really keen for you to try it, T, because mm. I thought this is going to be up your street. Yeah, definitely. Um, and other kind of group members like Rob, I think they'll they'll mm -hmm. dig it. Oh, they will love that. Absolutely yeah. dig it, and probably Chris as well. Yeah. Um, and I, it was a game that I was kind of looking forward to. It's not really my bag, you know. And I don't play the, the the computer game. The IP doesn't really interest me per se. And and then I started playing. And I think, as you said, T, the loadout. I love that. Mm -hmm. Just sitting there with Adrian. We was on the same team. I played Rafe. You were Gibraltar. Mm -hmm. And we were just like, right, what we're we gonna do? We're just working together, swapping bits, moving bits around making sure we had the right kind of loadouts for the guns and then yeah just got stuck into it it was just so much fun mm. um and it really surprised me and it's one of those games that is stuck with me yeah and i got a real buzz out of playing it for you know for days and days afterwards and still thinking about it and so i was like Ooh. and then the kickstarter campaign is literally live um, um as we speak and yeah i'm, I'm in I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> so, hold on, Glass Cannon. Yeah. yeah. You know what you're doing with these uh, IPs? I think it's their second game, right? They did Frostpunk. Yeah. And their first game. They're listening to the backers as well. So, yes. they've given a, the dioramas are beautiful. Seeing them in person, I wasn't sure about them. Seeing them in person, they are absolutely beautiful and useful as well. They hold all the bits you need and the cards. But they have done, because a few, quite a few backers were saying, I don't know about the dioramas, they've now done versions of each box yeah. with like more characters in, but less of the dioramas. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of not sure now whether I want the dioramas <laughs> or not. I'll be honest, it's kind of put me... So I've backed the, the Gamer Pledge at the moment, which gives you six players, six characters in the core box. But there is an option with four, but with the dioramas, and I'm now not sure which way I want to go on that, in all honesty, because the dioramas were actually really useful when you saw them in person. Yeah. But yeah, it's on Kickstarter it's right nice now. It's nice to have the option, like because it is a deluxe component. Mm -hmm. So, you know, people don't want to have to pay all of that. They don't have to, and that's good. But yeah, they're definitely listening to the feedback. Yeah. There's polls over what what stretch gold you want next. They list a few different ones. Yep. You get to vote on it. So they're, they're making it really interactive, which is nice to see because not all Kickstarters are in that respect. So yeah, and as, as you said, we were on Gaming Rules. So if you want to see a playthrough for yourself, if you couldn't make it to the expo, feel free. I think it's even linked on the Kickstarter page. So feel free to to watch us playing um, and winning. <laughs> you said I was a bad winner. <laughs> <laughs> That's always the cherry on the top, isn't it? Oh, and we won. Hooray. Yeah. Well, I, it, I mean, I say felt, that, I don't know. It, it felt never. bloody great. <laughs> it, there's a moment, I'm not going to spoil the moment, but there's a moment in that playthrough and it was just chef's kiss. Yeah. And it was like, this great. And Adrian like, and me were like a hive mind and it just worked. <laughs> and okay, maybe not all of it was premeditated and planned from my side anyway. Uh, but, it, but, it, but it worked it was great and we had a blast so nice yeah so it's not a new game um i had heard of it but i'd not really kind of had anything to do with it up till now walked past an empty table we all thought oh let's just sit down for a bit me and curly and tambo and his brother chris and we played port royale it was only the basic game although we were playing the big box version it was only the base um sort of cards that we used and it's kind of a like a, a card push your luck kind of very, yeah. very, very easy to understand. The cards both double as money if you turn them on there, sort of the, with the back upwards or whatever card they are. They're either ships or passengers. Yeah. And you're basically, you're, on your turn, you're creating a harbour of cards. So you basically keep turning cards over until you decide you don't want to push your luck anymore. And basically you go bust if you have more than one ship of the same colour. Mm -hmm. So you might have one red ship, two passengers, and you think, oh, I'm still going to go for it. And you get another blue ship and you're like, oh, right, now do I do I keep pushing my luck? Do I get another, oh, I could get another yellow. Oh, no, it's a blue ship. Yeah. Now everything's got Stop. done. And then you, yeah, you, you're, you're not going to get any points that, that time. Um, when you decide to stop, you then can cash in one of the ships for, for points, for coins. Um, and then everybody who then decides to buy one of the cards from your harbour, you get a point. Mm -hmm. So it's just a continual kind of cycle round and round. Um, some of the passengers kind of you end up keeping if you buy that passenger you end up keeping say the colours of the ships that you get they don't just turn into money they actually turn into VPs at the end of the game and it's it's the first two is it nine VP? Eight, eight VP? Eight, it was eight I think um, so it's a fairly quick game isn't it? very what, quick for us yeah. what would you say Curly? yeah I really enjoyed it um, yeah it's a really cool mechanic with cards I did enjoy that side of it um, 
I lost, which, you know, is always upsetting, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, it, it was really good fun. It was really quick, and it was really nice to kind of chill out and not be, like, surrounded. It was a really nice kind of... Um, I forget what table it was at now, actually. It was that shop on the top. It was on, in Hall 2. On the left as you went up on Hall 2. Oh, um, Pegasus Spiel. Pegasus Spiel. Oh, Spiel. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we sat down on that. The the guy gave us a really good talk through. We thoroughly enjoyed it. And, yeah. um, but so much so that you ended up buying a copy. I did buy it. it. So. And I did buy the big box edition. So, I'm yeah, having spoken to the, um, the guy that was demoing, he said, oh, you know, the, the base game's fine, but it really does kind of get more more interesting yeah. the kind of the, the extra yeah. and, and other people said that too not just the guy who was trying to flog me the game and funny enough <laughs> I actually didn't <laughs> right there. I, yeah. I didn't buy it from Pegasus Spiel sorry Pegasus Spiel um, I bought it from ooh I want to say I that. think they're fine. They'll still get some money. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah. They, get, <laughs> they get top and tape from it, so it's fine. <laughs> and they get their cut. It's, it's all good. <laughs> but yeah, really good guy. I really liked it. Just for a quick kind of filler, not quite party game. It's not really... No, it's a lighter. It's a half yeah. filler, isn't it? Yeah. Like, I'm not sure what the yeah. other modules bring when you put them in, yeah. but how long it makes it. But the base game's really quick. our collection for a casual, a casual fairly quick, quick yeah. without being a party game. Yeah. 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 I'm glad you guys were, because we were looking for it, and we were, we were quite, I was quite close to getting it as well. Yeah. Because I thought that. Apparently it's uh, 2014 it came out, but the big box was last year. Oh wow, yeah. I'm oh, current okay. then. I'm current with the big so box. You, you're current. Yeah. That's why they were probably demoing it, because yeah. it's fairly recent. Yeah. Hmm. But I think the, the base version was maybe, I want to say like £12 or something. Yeah. And the big box was something like £22. I thought, well actually that's... that's pretty good yeah. That's good thought, for a big box, if isn't it, it? Yeah. And it, it's not a massive box. But yeah, I'm really glad I, I bought that. I think it's going to sit in our collection really nicely. Yeah. Awesome, good stuff. How about, how about you guys, any more? Oh, I've got loads. Um, <laughs> yeah, settle in, there's another four hours of content. Uh, now I'm going to talk about the old King's Crown, and uh, if Davey was here, he would be shouting about this one. I think it's probably one of his highlights. It's, it's not like a hidden game, it's isn't it? It's a Davey game. What does that actually mean? It means the spice, mm. the spice in this game. There's the player interaction uh, through the wazoo, if that's a word. I'm going to use it. It's all good. I'm tired. Uh, so <laughs> the old king's crown is essentially the uh, like the king is dead, and you're like players heirs to to the throne. Um, yeah, you all have different uh, faction abilities. You, it's I don't know how to explain this on on a podcast. It's quite difficult, but you have like uh, kind of the realm, which is like three rows and has six sections on this main board, and you've got this like a uh, a card shop at the bottom called The Road and there's this other board at the top can't remember what it's called but it does um, has like some really powerful cards that are stuck there it was like questing, questing. the court or ambassador or something like that wasn't yeah it? so you, you kind of have your, your deck of cards and you'll draw I think like five or, or whatever into your hand and on the cards you've got like a, an influence number or initiative number that sits on the top left and you know all the cards kind of have different symbols on there they'll do different things with with kind of keywords that you'd expect to see in like a magic game or or any, any game that uses keywords um and you kind of at the start of the round you we well, kind of go through seasons don't you? you go through like spring summer um autumn winter and then there's various different solstice like pre-phases that kind of happen but the the core crux of the game is you were playing these cards face down um across these realms and all is secret and you reveal them and basically everyone swears because they're like no uh and you kind of vie for control of, of various different areas and if you win then you get to trigger the effect of, of one of the uh the two spaces that kind of happens there and you'll get influence and the whole point of the game is to get i think up to 15 influence something like that wasn't it um and yeah but there are ways that certain cards are revealed they can kind of manipulate um the cards played on on the board so you can kind of think i've got this great plan i'm going to use this card which will uh, like an agent which will kill and sabotage the other players uh characters that are on the board but then someone else plays this and it moves them around and you're like bastard <laughs> <laughs> and there's a lot of like swearing and, and back and forth and things like that and yeah, it, it's it's an interesting game. And I have to say, like we, we had a, a demo with Pablo, who's the uh, artist and I think also designed it or co-designed it. And the artwork on this game is phenomenal. Like it, I kind of liken it. I don't know if you've got a, a comparison, but it, it kind of reminds me of like Studio Ghibli kind of it's that, it's beautifully that, hand-drawn. It's very painterly, yeah. but sort of hand-drawn and it's all a little bit accentuated. Um, 
yeah, it's hard to describe, but it it's is so awesome. It is gorgeous, um, and you get these big tokens as well. I'm assuming they're going to stay roughly that size. So before you play the cards, oh, the herald. You put yeah. your herald in a, in a location, and if someone else also puts their herald in that location and they ba- they beat you, they get to take influence. So it kind of ups the ante of, it kind of shows people maybe you can bluff and say, oh, I'm going to go over here, and you don't go there at all. Yeah. But if you do that and someone else goes there, then they're going to nick influence off you. So is that the bet you want to make, or do you want to put something down and show your intention and put your cards out for it? As you said, there's quite a few keywords. Um which takes a little bit of getting used to, but actually didn't take too long. And the decks are roughly the same. There's like one card or two cards different in each person's deck. But the abilities, mm. you get the little abilities that you get to turn over once a game, I think it was. Um, and the abilities and the cards you get from going questing yes. are the things that make each faction different. Um, and so the asymmetry was there, but it was not ma- It was big enough to make a difference, but not massive. Um and yeah, I enjoyed I enjoyed our playthrough. Um, shout out again to Pablo because he said sat down and said I'm not great at teaching, and then probably gave one of the teachers of the expo for me. Mm. He did the perfect thing of I'm going to teach you a small set of rules. You'll have turn one. Now I'm going to add some more rules during turn two. Now I'm going to add some more rules during turn three. I think we just had the three turns. If yeah, I remember four, correctly. I think four, maybe. Yeah. But each turn, he made sure to give you what you needed to learn a little bit more of the game. And he did a fantastic job, considering he sat down and went, I'm not very good at this teaching sort of thing. And we took the mick out of him for it a little bit and all that (laughs) because we were having a a good laugh. Uh, But he did a great job of of doing something I didn't see a lot of, which was teaching a little bit each turn. And we didn't necessarily see that every uh, every table where we did a demo. Yeah, and I think to to approach that demo with everything in play would be... yeah, you'd have just sat there being talked at for twenty minutes and then yeah. wondered what was due to happen next. So, so he did a fantastic job of of the demo there. Um, yeah, and that's coming to Kickstarter soon as well, yeah, I believe. Not sure when, but uh, yeah, keep an eye on it. I know the other content creators that uh, we know have been talking about this one as well. They've yeah. got their eyes on it. Um, so yeah, sounds interesting. Yeah, I've just had a little look while you guys were talking just to see when it releases, and they haven't got a day free yet, but they've got a pre. Um, pre-launch page where they're going to notify people so just keep an eye on that it just says coming 2023 yeah it's full of their artwork as well yes yeah. yeah, so if you have a look at their page I had a look at it uh, the other day and yeah it's just full of their art if, you, if, if that's all you're interested in because maybe like the backstabbing sort of bluffing game isn't really your thing and it was a good version of that just have a look at the artwork it's fantastic yeah. just for that so it really the, is the old king's crown dot com and you're right Studio Ghibli artwork style very beautiful doesn't sound like one for me. Sounds a bit stabby, stabby, kind of very thinky, but it looks like a very beautiful game. Yeah, it, stunning. It, it wasn't that hidden mechanic, which I quite often with that hi- hidden mechanic, you can bring out people like Davey who will just shout at you and tell you you're lying and all that. Lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there is the option to have that in the game, but because they're giving you a fair chunk of information because what people have, have played and, you know, because the decks are very similar, you can kind of get a feel for it. There was a lot more of that sort of euro feel of guessing what people have done rather than okay. trying to bl- like you can bluff mm-hmm. and you can do sort of oh, I'll, I'll swap these two of your cards around because i reckon this is what you've done but there was enough information in there to kind of to give you that feel of like you had control and it wasn't just shouting at someone across the table yeah. that they're the, they're the cylon or whatever you know <laughs> <laughs> Oh, speaking about um, Silent and Unfathomable, I want to give a shout out to an amazing painting company. Um, I think it's Exit 23 Games. And their paint was called Turbo, Turbo Dork. Dork. Wow, what a shiny paint. Oh, my <laughs> what Lord. What a shiny paint. Woohoo! It's like, it's like crushed up diamonds, baby. It's so <laughs> oh, shiny. Oh, stuff in it. It's yeah, like it's lovely. Is it good? Yeah. I've bought a, a colour that I decided to turn manky green. Um, it's it's a great colour, but it's 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 perfect manky green colour to paint the um, the deep ones in uh, Unfathomable. Oh, it's going to look cool. awesome. Mother Hydra and uh, Father D- Dagon, Dagon, yeah. Yeah, and the little and the little funny deep one fishy mutant. The, the fishy things. ones, yeah, yeah. The fishy ones. But it's going to look good. I thought really I'd just nice. see if you remember our Christmas um, quiz. Uh, yeah. I'm all over. Oh, you always yours, actually. It was, it was my still question. I forgot that one right. To be honest, <laughs> <laughs> I think I went for the Bing Bong. But, uh, <laughs> anyway. but yeah, they were they were really nice company. They were really chatty and friendly. <laughs> and uh, yeah, with yeah, I, I would definitely be back on their website buying some lovely 
lovely paint. Nice. For oh, sure. Yeah. The only thing, the only other thing I wanted to say is I spent way too much money when I found Aries Games had a store there. They did. Yes. Oh my god! I was like, oh my life. There Lord we go. Of the rings. Lord of the rings. Money. Did, you, money did you get a promo card? Yeah. I did. I got all the promos. I bought, well, I did just get all of that, mate. I got the uh, got an expansion for the main game. I bought War of the Ring card game. I bought the uh, metal boxes to go with it and all of the promos. So nice. Yeah. Good haul. I did, and I didn't even look at the price. I just put it there, and then I'll deal with the with the uh, you know deal with the resulting <laughs> hassle later. Worry about it later. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I was so. made sad when I looked at my bank account and realised I only got paid last week. It was like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, oh, oh. Bean, the end of the month, did it? Beans on toast for the rest of the month, then please. I had, I had a look at mine and it was, um, it was looking all right. I was like, oh, that's not too bad. And then it's all pending. Pending, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pending and it was like, like hovering like a vulture. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. 400 pounds or so. Like, oh, <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> Crikey, even I didn't go that bad. Went deep. Yeah, Lord, Lord of Rings. Uh, Lord of Rings got him. Yeah, Lord of Rings really got him. Can't help it, can you? Can't help it. <laughs> Got to get the cardboard. Too right. Yeah. Any other games? I have a quick, quick. We'll go for a quick one. Um, we put that demoed, and it's a good for a family game, I think, for like Josh and like if you're the oh. younger generation. Yeah. Kung Fu Panda. Ah. Yeah, we sat down and we thought, we like the look of it, and we sat down and the miniatures are so detailed, they're just look brilliant for a start, and yeah. the board is great. And it is a, literally a combat dice rolling game. I'll quickly go through it, it's very simple. Um, you have the characters from Kung Fu Panda, um, you have four on the characters on the board, there's, there was no, three of us, sorry, when we played, but there's four players. Yeah. Um, and then all it is, is time-based combat, which is something that I've never seen before. It's very manic, you literally you got time, you turn your timer on, and then we all just simulate start rolling our dice. And then um, you match the symbols, and then you have to match symbols to move because the boards have the symbols on the boards to move to the next tile. And then you get in the combat. So you, if you get hit, you kill one or they spawn, and everyone's doing it simultaneous. But you can also use each other's dice to help with the oh, combat. Right. So you got to really com- communicate at the same time, yeah. and it's just really fun and manic. So, so it's frantic. like frantic. Yeah. So it's like Kung Fu Panda. So when they go into fighting, it's all and that's yeah. what you're doing. And and yes, yeah, so you do it. You move, and when the timer's out. You just take a death breath and then you go again. <laughs> <laughs> you just keep moving through the board. And it's really quite good, um, really interestingly fun. Um, I don't know if it's too manic. I don't know if it can get quite frustrating. I don't know. But when we did the demo, I mean, we did the whole mission in like, it took about five minutes, I think, just one scenario. So that's how right, so you're, you're a team. You're a team. You're battling. Yeah, and you've got to get from whatever. one destination, pick up the objectives on the way. I see, yeah, okay. And then you've got to get to the exit. Yeah. Why fighting all the, all the and they got spawn points then you rolled certain dice they, they have, you have a board in front of you it spins so when you roll a certain symbol like a damage symbol you, you put the arrow front it could be damage mm-hmm. or it could be a spawn from the enemy on a certain tile and you keep going around or, and if you're doing the campaign when you pass the grey area something happens in the campaign when you play the campaign mode because it is really a campaign game um, but you can do everything individual as well um, yeah it was just we came out I thinking that was really fun and manic and I was quite tempted to buy it but I don't think it would get enough time Person. Yeah, um, but visually the the details and the miniatures and everything look really good. Um, I think it was quite good value for money. It's about forty quid, I think, for what you get for it. All the dice, all the miniatures, everything. It was good value, I thought. You guys both seemed really enthused, so we bumped into you just after. You yeah, played it was it. like we were pumped up. And they were just like, like, "Oh, this is a really good game." Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was just like, just like it was so theatrical to the to the movie. It's really clever. I can imagine kids having a great time with that. Yeah. Just yeah. families, yeah. Just like let's just roll loads just, of rah! dice, roll loads of dice, work together. <laughs> yeah. It's really good fun. Nice, mm. nice. Well, sticking with the uh, the the kind of kung fu ish theme, so on on the Sunday uh, I was kind of doing my little wander around the expo, and I think it's the first time I actually kind of was by myself, and oh. that was nice. <laughs> 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 I think it's nice to do that every now and then, just have a little bit of time to yourself, and just go and just look around shops and look around the stores. And I managed to bump into uh, I think I was at the Lucky Duck um, stall. And they had a, a copy of uh, Senjutsu, a Battle for Japan, which is a game I've heard about very, very lightly, and I've seen kind of pictures of it. But it's a this is like a samurai sword fighting game, like uh, arena battles where I think up to four people, maybe more with expansions, you can kind of duke it out to the death. Um, and it's all card play. And... I thought I'd just try it out because I bumped into uh, Mark Dainty from Knotball Gaming um, out in the hall and he was telling me about it. And he said, oh, you got to play it. I said, right, I'm off, try and find it. And uh, off we did. So, so yeah, it, it's uh, 
kind of your play, you've got the hand of cards, you kind of play them simultaneously face down, you reveal them, you have uh, initiative order on the cards, and a lot of the cards kind of work through procedurally their steps. Yep. And uh, some of the cards actually have multiple initiative numbers on them, so you might do the top half of your card first, and then might go to a different player, do theirs, and comes back to yours to finish the, the card off. Um, and sometimes your initiative numbers will range from like two to six, so you can actually choose what that number is to see if you're going up first or behind a, a player. And on the board, it's all like hexagons, as every board game ever. <laughs> um, but you actually have positioning um, and, and where you're facing is very important. So there's a little arrow on your miniature that says you're facing a certain direction. And even turning is key. So that you're playing your attack cards, your kind of area of effect and damage is going in the right way. But just like in kind of sword, samurai sword fighting that you'd expect. There's a lot of movement that you might kind of move past, slip past your, your opponents, stab backwards, spin around, spin them around. And yeah, I, I just mm-hmm. found it really interesting, um, really fun. And it plays pretty quick. Like you're going to do a match in probably 30 minutes and you're like, dun, 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 and you know, off, off you go. And I think it's like first to five wounds and then you're dead. Um, and you're just literally eliminating all the other players on the board until it's done but I think if you get eliminated you're not waiting that long to get back in for the next mm. match if that makes sense yeah. but yeah I really enjoyed it I, yeah, I, 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 I followed this quite closely on Kickstarter but at the time I was also looking at other Kickstarters yeah. and I decided that another arena battler was kind of adding to what I already had mm-hmm. but yeah looking at the miniatures on the board they were gorgeous the um, I don't know quite how much of the board game is like this, but everything had that um, sort of just slightly off-white with the cherry blossom yeah. effect on it, yeah. which is just very it feels very thematic and put you in that sort of yep. that mindset for yeah, as you say, sort of samurais and feudal sort of systems and stuff like that. Um, yeah, and it looks gorgeous. So I'm glad to hear that the the sort of the gameplay stood up because it looked good in the Kickstarter. I just as I say, I just had to position my funds elsewhere um so yeah glad you got a game in it. yeah you, you you know you, you kind of get the, uh, the the impact of of like slashing your swords you'll have an area of effects and damage that will go from left to right or right to left and if there's obstacles in the way it'll block um the, the sword oh, nice. path so you got to kind of like i said position is is key uh yeah really loved it enjoyed mm. it i think a lot of people in the group would uh would have a good time with it yeah Actually, you're doing a good job on the podcast of selling me games. Out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that I sounds interesting. Like Apex Legends, oh, that sounds interesting. More interesting than, than I initially gave it credit for. And then yeah. it sounds really good now, so it's like, mm. stop it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm all the money. No, buy them. Normally that's <laughs> me when Adrian's talking about something. Like, oh, that's that one. I don't think I sold you anything at this expo. I felt no. very restrained in not wandering around going, oh, that looks good. Well, you know that you just one word and she's bought it. You, you did enough of a good job of buying stuff without I, did. this time. I didn't go as mad as I did last time. Um, the last game I wanted to talk about was a game called uh, Fate Forge, um, which is being released by um, Mighty Board. They're the same people who do Hamlet and uh, oh, Vengeance nice. and things like that. Uh, they're releasing a new game. It's already Kickstarter, but it's in late pledge. Um, the the idea behind the game it's a classic kind of dungeon crawlery type game, but it's heavily narrative driven, completely co op. And their big kind of selling point of it is that it kind of sets up, plays, does a story and finishes just over an hour. So it's a great time for that kind of game. Yeah, there's a real niche, I think, especially with a lot of the games going around at the moment. We're not going to name names, but a lot of them take a hefty amount of setup time. So I think there's certainly a lot of people out there who are like, right, I just want the lighter side for the minute, you know. One Descent game. Haven. Yeah, Descent Haven last <laughs> night. You know, <laughs> Descent, Descent Haven last night, and you know, tonight I want to chill. I want to play a bit of this. You know, so um, but they did a really good job selling it. You know, they they said things that there are some things in there almost like hidden eggs that you won't. You know, there's uh, for an example the way they were telling it. You move around the board, you do attacks, damage. Some characters block you. Some do damage to you. Others do different things. You're going around this map. Um, but the idea is you've got to go and rescue your friend in this example who's being, you know, tried to be picked on by the guards and, you know, taken advantage of. Um, but over on the other side of this town square, um, the other side of the town square is a merchant who, uh, and you have to try and take the gem off him. I, don't, I can't remember the narrative mm-hmm. exactly. But if you didn't bother to go and get the gem, no problem. You probably never hear anything about it. But if you did this one specific side event in 30 scenarios time and you did take that, then 
it would play out slightly differently than if he didn't, you know. Mm. So it was, you know, quite interesting going on that route. It's totally app driven, so you don't have to remember that stuff, which I really like because, yeah. you know, the the descent havens of these worlds, although they do have apps, they're companion apps and helpers, but the actual maintenance and the admin is well, yeah, we know, yeah, anyone. it's painful. It's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. We do love the game, but it's a, a lot. lot. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that that whole the whole idea of it really interested me. I'm not gonna click on this late pledge is now available because frankly I'm skin and I'm concerned about well, how much it pounds down. if I do click on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, well, you've got Apex Legends all in. Yeah, Senjutsu. Uh, then Senjutsu then, late yeah, pledge and yeah. this. <laughs> gonna be broke, aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> well, what I was gonna say is, um, I don't know whether your Apex Legend, the, the, who's ordered it? Me and Adrian. You both of you. Do you need a set each, or are you just buying it for your friend group? Yeah. That the mm. us, so the betrayal group. Yes, yes, I'm buying it for my betrayal group. <laughs> but you don't, but you don't need a different set. So now no. you've got it, JP. I you don't, don't need to buy it, do I? No. no. Awesome. You saved me a lot of money, good sir. I'll, I'll, I'll Between I'll do that, that lot, and your obsession I? with Mind Clash games is brilliant. I don't own a single Mind Clash game, and it's my favourite game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, so yeah, just a shout out to them really because you know that that yeah you love really that didn't you? You well, really we chatted to the chatted to the designer guy and he you know when someone's so passionate about something it's really even though I've got not an awful lot of interest in dungeon crawlers it, he made me want to see what it was about because he was so passionate and you could tell he'd spent so much time and and really loved what he was doing and that really came across it was it was really really nice that was I think the benefit of going to the press event. Yeah. And you can totally do that on the Friday, Saturday, Sunday, but there's just a lot more people around. So you might be able to catch five minutes with the designer or whatever, but it was just nice that we had the, you know, we were lucky enough to have the opportunity to do that a little bit more freely, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, you know, for a couple of hours on the Thursday. It's quite and lovely, he was just, it? yeah, and it, it was just really lovely. They weren't trying to sell us anything. It didn't feel like that to me. They just wanted to explain yeah. their, their their babies which yeah. was which was really which really nice yeah years and it years was really years. nice you get to this point at expo where they're like i'm showing it off yeah 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 i uh, yeah, couldn't imagine yeah it's mad yeah. parent time yeah <laughs> your, that's it i mean your baby board game <laughs> normally you know when you're wandering around like a marketplace people are trying to hawk their wares at you you know um oh come and look at this game but you didn't feel like that with these designers they just wanted to they just wanted to show off their creations which was it was just really, really lovely. And it, as an aside, and it's completely off topic but similar. I don't know. I didn't see the uh, the 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 hand warming gel guys that were there last year. Do you remember? I remember that. You remember them? Yeah. It's like the most randomest product to be at the UK Games Expo. It's like some people just you know crack this gel stuff and then suddenly you can put it into your gloves and keep your hands. Yeah, warm. I didn't see huh? any of them. Exactly. Well, like yeah, at, no. at a Games Expo. Why not? And yeah, I remember, like, do you, want, do you want to have a go at keeping your hands warm? I'm like, I'm good, thanks. No, I think it's just kind of optic because we stay indoors where yeah, it is. Yeah, that's it. You know? No, I, just, I don't go outside very often. I just found it really odd. But anyway, as a quite uh, aside, I didn't see them there this, this year. I have just remembered something really, really quickly because they didn't have much detail on it, but also next to the um, uh, next to the Faithful stand was the Lost Ruins of Arnak expansion. So the new one, yeah, that, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. that looks so really that good. Looks really, uh, it is in prototype, it's nowhere near ready, but they've got two new characters, a bunch of new cards, co-op new well. mechanics, co op. Um, it mm. looks really interesting. So, um, yeah, shout out for them, really, just to say that looks like if they I imagine it's going to release before next year, that is going to be the absolute I think it's people are going to be really good up for Gen Con. I think they said, yeah, yeah Gen Con. Essen, I think we ready. were going to look at it for Essen. Um, was, was when we'll be uh, yeah. hoping to get it anyway but yeah that looks really really good mm. and anything I absolutely love Lost Rounds of our night, so anything that adds to that is a winner for me but yeah the Lost Expedition I'm going to really quickly run through a handful of demos that I saw um, and had a very quick chat with and didn't get to play but they all sort of caught my eye so there was Undaunted Battle of Britain by Osprey Games Kowali, which is an abstract by Gigamic Gigamic Games I don't know they do a lot of the white box abstract games um, that I had a quick playthrough of that. That was really good. Um, Tribes of the Wind, which was a, um, a a Euro game where a lot of the cards, whether you could play them or how powerful they were, depended upon the other cards that are in people's hands. So what colours they had. So I had a really quick look at that. That looked fantastic. To Anaku by Sit Down Games. I think that might be a Becky game. You Ooh. work together to work out a puzzle. 
and where and there's like loads of the different pu- like like Sudoku. There's like loads of different puzzles that. What they, was that called? T- Tuanaku. Tuanaku. I think that was the way it was. Um, that looked fantastic and completely different to a lot of the other stuff. So, but what I've for my last one, what I'm actually going to talk about is uh, board game adjacent. Yeah. Let's call it board game adjacent. So it was all on board VR gaming. So. I'm sure you've seen it, put the VR headset on, you've got the two controllers. Um, it was my first proper VR experience. I'd stood on the spot and looked around with a VR headset on before, but I'd never really used a controller. Um, and it's something I've looked at buying before because it quite interests me for playing like computer games at VR. And yeah, we walked over, they sort of gave us a little bit of a talk about their aims. So they're aiming to use as few buttons as possible so that it is intuitive to use. And, and spoiler alert, it is. Um, and they were talking about that they're making it um, as adaptable and as modular and some of the stuff that they're looking at bringing out, and I'm sure we'll talk about it in another episode down mm-hmm. the line. They've mentioned that they want to make this platform easy to program and build on so that when someone's looking to load a game onto it or put a game into the environment that um, they can as easily as possible. Obviously, these things are not very, like, not the easiest no. things to do, but they've made Low it... code, sort of said. Yeah, they've made it... They've, they've tried to make a platform where people can code easily into it. And uh, they showed us like that they've got different environments. So if you're playing a space game, you'll play in a VR space area or in a medieval castle. We played a demo version of Istanbul mm-hmm. or not played, but we like navigated around Interacted it. Interacted with it, yeah. Um, and that was sort of around a nice big board game looking table with sort of stone walls and all and that. You're in a tea room, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was. And yeah, uh, there was some really put the headsets on. They gave us a quick tour how you could sort of set the height you were at the table. So when we first sat down, I felt like a kid <laughs> yeah, at the like, table. Really high, wasn't it? And I was like, I'm not going to be able to play this like this. And what you do is you grab a handle and then you sort of pull back on the, the, the stick and it, it raises you up or down to the level that you're comfortable at. So you can see the table probably as you would in real life. So, you know, Becky might be a bit closer to the table if she set herself up on, <laughs> on it, being a little shorter than the rest of us. She might find that more natural, whereas I was kind of quite high up like on the table. Yeah. 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 And then they showed you how you can grab things. You can, like, actually use your hand almost to grab it. You can reach out and grab it, or you can sort of select a pointer and then pull the button to bring it towards you. Yeah, using your force powers. And you just yeah, yeah. And it did feel, a did feel a bit like I was Spider-Man pulling yeah. some stuff across with a web. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can throw them across the room if you want to. I had a good laugh of two, three minutes just chucking coins at JP virtually. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the the brilliant thing about it, as they said, is you know if I did that in real life, you'd be right annoyed because the, the, the component was gone off the table. Someone would have to collect it, remember where it was. If you throw something accidentally away, it pings back on the table where it was nice little thoughts like that were just fantastic for you know sort of showing you what this virtual environment can do Um, and there was one of the the great things was that you could kind of click on an interactive piece and make it sort of larger right in front of you so it brought up as if you were holding the card up to your face so you could read like with Istanbul obviously there's little symbols and if it's the furthest point of the board game normally you might stand up and loom over it a little bit no click like point at it click on it bring it towards you it would bring up right in front of you the the tile so you could see exactly what it was and then there was a few options down the right and you could click and it would tell you a little bit of info about what that item did or how you interacted mm-hmm. it explained it properly in game um and then you could just put the tile back down basically it's not only is it kind of magnify the tile but it also shows you the the game state on that particular tile so in istanbul you'll know that you have the the rubies on certain tiles Mm -hmm. so it'll show you how many of them are left in a 2d kind of magnified view so so yeah you don't have to because you know any board game that that you play Diagonally opposite you is always like the worst yeah, place yeah, to look, isn't it? It was really intuitive, which is one of the aims they said. They've got a load of ideas, whether like because we played in a sandbox mode where you could do whatever you wanted, essentially. Yeah. But they were talking about having two options. Potentially, it's something they were looking at for the future was having a sandbox mode and a scripted mode where you couldn't make illegal moves on the board, or ones where you could, so that if you if you wanted as a designer to allow your board game to use house rules then you wouldn't use it scripted, so there was no illegal moves. Mm -hmm. So if you have learned the game possibly slightly wrong and you want to keep playing that way, there is the potential that someone could code for a sandbox mode where you could keep playing it wrong, and if that's what you're happy with, you would still be happy with it. There was, They were really, again, passionate and excited about this project. 
it's in late pledge at the moment. They've had the Kickstarter um, already, which is funded, and they're in late pledge, I think they said August. Something like that. It yeah. closes. So we're hoping to, to talk about it a little bit more in, in a future episode. It was really, for someone who's not used VR before, it was surprisingly intuitive, and I felt like I had the hang of it within the five minutes that we'd we'd yeah. played for. Yeah, it'd be something I'll be keeping an eye on. As I've said, I, I was already considering VR anyway. That possibly might be the most expensive demo I had because it'll cost me a £350 <laughs> yeah. VR headset plus. Say, it's still less than what Curly played. Uh, play is, is, that, is that the price point, £350? Right. So it uses... It uses um, so I don't know if they've confirmed, but they're using several different VR headset types that will be compatible and it'll be cross-platform. So if you're using, I don't know, Meta, if you're using like, yeah, Meta, Meta so VR or thing. PlayStation VR, yeah. you can still cross over. You just buy the software and then each game that comes out will have a, a cost related to it as well. Right. And so you, but they were saying that hopefully the plan is that only one person needs to buy the board game like you would normally. We don't all have to buy the board game. One person brings the board game to the table and then you play on it that way. Well, that's so. a similar thing they do with like BGA and a lot of these mm -hmm. website yeah. ones, isn't it? Is that only one person needs to be the subscriber, yeah. you know? And that's the thing. Um, so that's me. really good. Yeah, I, mean, like, I liken it to tabletop simulator in the way that it's been presented. Yeah. Obviously, it's nothing like TTS because that's not virtual reality. But I think they're trying to go down that road of how can we make this uh, a platform for, for publishers and partners to you know, to kind of help put their games out, even crowdfunding, um, you know, imagine in a crowdfunding campaign, I want to try it and actually jump into the virtual environment where you pick up a card, like in Istanbul, where it symbols and it reads you the text out, literally says, this is what it does, yeah. you know, and it just bypasses all of the um, the, the barriers to, to learn and, and yeah, just puts you straight into to the game as close as, you know, a physical environment. And they acknowledge that physically is going to be the best way of, of playing board games but at the minute at the minute but the you know it, it's a close second you know it's yeah it, it's the most immersive you can probably be at the yeah. moment with the technology we have at the moment yeah. without being physically there yeah and Be Be becky you could have your avatar as a pirate Yay! at the table excellent anytime when you get to wear a pirate hat i'm, I'm <laughs> you're, you're down aren't you yeah 100 yeah. percent. i wonder whether they'll make it open to customization like, yeah the modding know? yeah they are yeah, yeah. they are that's yeah. interesting because yeah. that's what tts really is a lot of the tts content is and that's what yeah, we're modding. speaking to them about is like the, these products and platforms live and die by the communities yeah and they're allowing modding for that reason so that you know, we want to encourage the community to, to build their own games. Yeah. So if, if it kind of takes, you know, it takes on board similar to TTS, then, then yeah, you can kind of see it working. Yeah. But, but obviously you need to have the hardware, you need to have the headset, you need to, to invest in, in, you know, virtual reality in general. But yeah, damn, it was interesting. I was so glad to try it out. It was brilliant. Yeah, definitely. I think I just want to finish off by uh, saying I played on Friday uh, a game from uh, Board and Dice called Books of Time and never even heard of this game at all. I think it just got released for, for UK Games Expo and it kind of caught my eye because yeah, every player has three little mini ring binders. And I was Ooh. like, oh, yeah, you, I, th I think this is another one you want to keep your eye out, Becky, because yeah. I think it's, it's a light to mid-weight game. It kind of reminds me of a similar game to like Gizmos, that kind of weight, if you've ever played Gizmos, but it's that, you know, little engine buildery um, kind of game. So yeah, each player's got three ring binders, a red, yellow, and green one, and they're all kind of themed in, in different ways. And you've got this main kind of uh, book that, that sits um, and drives the game forward through various different events, I think they're called Chronicle events. And on your go, you, you kind of take the Chronicle event before or after you go. They'll have symbols on it, gives you resources like pens and paper, and you're literally like buying pages out of a shop and you're putting them into your book. You're like writing the pages into the book, and this sounds you, great. Yeah, and you can spend uh, actions to activate your book, and you'll do all the uh, actions and benefits of it, and then you turn the page over. So then you've obviously got a, a new action set for, for the next one. And all the pages have got like uh, symbols, and you're trying to get certain sets. Um, in your books because then that'll help your end game scoring uh, and there's a little tech tree which is quite interesting that allows you to, to get you know, more and more kind of efficiencies off, off your actions if you're doing certain things you know it, it's it's fun it was a fun game it's, I don't think it's something I, I was like 
wowed by like I didn't think it was the most amazing game I'm I wowed by blast. it and I haven't even seen it yeah we played a mini game so I'd like to play a full game of it just to see how kind of explosive it kind of feels as you go through it because sometimes in demos you just get going it's like well we're ending it here because you know there's 50,000 people who want to try the game yeah. so you know mm-hmm. and that's fair um, that Dan uh, bought a copy so I think uh, you'll be no doubt playing it oh, soon sure. anyway. Yeah, um, it but yeah, it's 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 a nice kind of mid lightweight game. Aesthetically, you know, if you like station uh, stationers. <laughs> oh yes. You know, Ryman's oh, or any other absolutely stationers Paper that we, chase. we 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 want to mention. May they rest in peace. Yeah, and you just mess around your little ring binders and put pages. And it's great fun. Yeah. Sounds really good. Yeah. I okay. wish I'd have known what the, the... I saw the box. I wish I'd have known what it was about because I think I would have yeah, really poked about a bit more. I think you would have liked that one. But yeah. anyway. So how about our actual experiences? My yeah. my top experience, I think, is just, again, like it was last year, you just look around and everyone is happy and smiling and having fun. No one feels out of place. Everyone is all there for the collective fun of the hobby. And I didn't see anyone having an argument or having a... T- nothing. It was just fun nice it's, I mean, it's a sensory overload it's noisy it's it's crammed but it was it was just really fun just really fun so from a from a first first visit adrian what was your yes yeah, it was my first expo i didn't know what to expect um i kind of did the opposite of curly because as you mentioned you didn't really stop to do much demoing no i wanted to do all of the demoing and see all the stands and all that kind of stuff so Quite often I'd break off from the group and go and find sort of my myself around yeah. and had a bit of a wander around on my own. Um, there was a lot of people in forums beforehand asking about what's the, if I go on my own, what's the solo experience? What's the solo play of the UK Games Expo like? Mm-hmm. And there are some challenges, as you've mentioned, sensory overload for for me was a big one, especially on that Friday. I felt a little bit lost to start with mm. and it got to me a little bit and then sensory overload and I had to kind of come scurrying back to the group a little bit and just get a bit of a comfort zone for five minutes before like I went back out again. Yeah. yeah, a little cuddle. That's mm-hmm. it. You're great for cuddles over the weekend. It's fantastic. Yeah. Um, and as was Marcus. So I fit the thumbs up for Marcus cuddles as well. <laughs> um, but yeah. There was a, a fair chunk of that. What I'll say is I queued quite a lot. I'll talk about the bring and buy in a second. I queued quite a lot um, at entrances, waiting for demos, at the bring and buy. In every single queue, someone just chatted to me, like at random. And whether it was Friday morning where I spoke to a family where they'd all sort of grown up, like the kids had grown up around board gaming and I think dad was the competitive one by the sounds of things but you know they would all sort of grown up around it and the games they were liking playing and all that kind of stuff saturday morning i spoke to some people who told me about stalls that sold out and what they were enjoying and even sunday i t- spoke to some um spoke to some people who'd been involved in various tournaments and competitions and i got that sort of level of sort of tournament talk about the games they were playing and all that kind of stuff at any point everyone wanted to talk to me if I was queuing up on my own sort of thing, which was fantastic. And there was a couple of times I walked around and I sort of had a place to be, but I was like, oh, I'm going to have a quick watch of five minutes of that game. And twice people were just like, do you want to join us? Like there's three of us around a table. You can get involved as well. I never took them up on the offer, not because I didn't want to, but purely because I was normally like, I've got to be 10, 15 minutes because we've agreed to meet this publisher or Mm -hmm. whatever. But thank you very much to anyone who did invite, invite because it sort of, reinforce the fact that it is a friendly expo and that if you are going on your own you yeah you might have to wait five minutes for someone else to turn up for a demo but for the most part someone will invite you if you sort of hover yeah. <laughs> or yeah. you know quite often if they're about to have a game and you're sort of oh that looks interesting they'll yeah just come and join it's all good so yes yeah, so all that was really fun from a an expo like from a solo experience at the expo so i wasn't there solo but I spent, I'd say, half of my time going around the hall on my own. Um, and I was happy to do it. And it was really friendly and welcoming. People just wanted to talk to you about their game or about their experience if they were sort of a customer um, as well. Um, but yeah, from an anxiety point of view, there was quite a lot of stimulus and uh, just sort of background noise. and The drone, the constant There was drone, a constant yeah. sort of drone and people sometimes, you know, some, some people sort of lean out at you as you're going past, kind of all come and have a demo sort of thing and... If you're not in the right mindset, that can be a bit much. But for the most part, if I kind of went, oh, sorry, they just allowed you to keep on walking. They didn't push the point or anything like that. So 
yes that is there there are quiet areas of the expo hall and outside at the NEC and that you can go to if you need to decompress a little bit but anyone who's sort of worried about that do anything you need to for self-care but I wouldn't let it put you off too much it is there are that it's good for solo for people going on their own it is okay for people with anxieties in my experience it might be too much for you but I found that there was enough downtime especially on the Friday and the Sunday the Saturday was heaving yeah. absolutely heaving but the Friday and the Sunday especially were really good for just having a bit of a wander around and getting to talk to people and and not as much of that sensory overload yeah mm. no I'm glad you glad you had a good experience because I know you've talked about this on various other conventions like you know Gridcon and and other things and obviously this is the biggest one the UK has to offer to my knowledge I'm sure I'm sure it is and even I feel like need to get out of here for a minute because it's just so many people the seas of people it's the zombie shambler you know as you walk around doing shuffles aren't you with your feet you're like, especially on that sunday i don't think i moved more than sort of maybe like a six inch pace each time almost yeah. like my feet just couldn't move quick enough because yeah. <laughs> of the press on all sides mm-hmm. you mean saturday sorry on saturday yeah yeah how about I played you? it a little bit differently this time. I um, on the Saturday I didn't really go around the expo at all. I do, did nine to eleven. When it got too busy, I just went and game for the rest of the yep. day. Same as me. Yeah. My problem was that the the overload was so much that I couldn't sit down and enjoy a game. So we tried to play runes or runes of Arnak on Friday, mm. I think it was. Yeah. And I was so overwhelmed at that point that I couldn't get my head into having a sit down game. Mm. I wasn't so overwhelmed that I couldn't go and do. A bit more wandering around and looking at things but to then sit and play a game and concentrate and enjoy i was overloaded at that point so i couldn't do it mm. sunday was slightly better because we started yeah. off playing games had a little wonder it was really quiet came back played kapow um, which is a great little dice chucking comic book game um, and then was able to go back out and i looked for bargains i'll be honest because everyone had said there was bargains this year everyone was just sold out. I found like two bargains around the entire hall and they neither of them really interested me and I'd already spent quite a bit of money. So I didn't didn't purchase that point. But most of the places where I thought, oh, they might have some bargains, just sold out signs everywhere because mm. they just sold through their stock. Um, but yeah, I can understand those people who maybe aren't don't get the sensory overload in that sense, going and having a sit down on the Saturday and just chill out because it was a press. Like, yeah. It was definitely that feeling of being pressed in mm. yeah T, how about you from a first time expo um, attendee uh, exactly just like adrian said i think the first day was quite overwhelming it was fine for me but it was like i, I just need to get my bearings i spent all like after i said before just just walking around looking at things see how things work and then i literally like you said gave somewhere quiet i went to the open gaming tables and we just played games and had some lunch had coffee and just two and stayed there and then just popped in now and then but Saturday was really busy, and again, I got a couple of demos in the Apex and stuff, but um, it generally, great fun. I mean, one thing that always sticks around on the Friday, and I was just wandering around, I was just walking, so looking around, everybody didn't pay attention, heard behind me saying, please move away from a spray bin and turn around as a Dalek. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just saying, this looks so realistic, it was so cool. I was like, oh, this is great, this is brilliant. Yeah, so that was on the Friday, that was our first, yeah. And then, yeah, it was really good, generally, really fantastic. Um, I haven't got any bad points to say about it, to be honest. I mean, it was very busy, but that's what you, you expect it to be, don't yeah. you? Um, yeah. yeah, that's what I thought. But there was always places you can get out and just just go and do your own thing anyway. So yeah, really, really good. Already booked up to go next year. So. <laughs> Danny, um, what about you? What was your highlight? Um, I'd learned a little bit from last year, I think, um, where I did do a lot of demoing and I went a lot out there on the busiest days, and I just didn't enjoy it as much. This time round, I kind of had an idea of what I wanted to do. Friday, I did spend a fair amount of time just wandering around, but with no real goal, just to kind of take it all in. And then um, started a little bit of gaming, which is what I wanted to focus a bit more on Saturday. Um, yeah, had a quick look around and then spent the rest of the day gaming, which was absolutely awesome, until we uh, had a marvellous dinner. At, uh, well, how do you pronounce it? Well, Las Yeah, that was really good. I think um, we just indulged ourselves on that oh, meal, yeah, didn't we? Yeah, it was good. Yeah, it was good. Tasty, yeah, tasty churros. Churro, the churros. Churros, yeah. that was decadent at the end, I have to say. <laughs> gorgeous. <laughs> they were gorgeous. Although I really like the, um, what was it, the tropical kind of sauce? In the mango dip. Yeah, mango no. dip. That yeah, weird. Yeah. That didn't work for me. But At least no, favourite. Yeah, Cinnamon yeah, sugar and then mango dip. It's not, it's not, it's not it a winner for me. For me. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the Sunday was the biggest day for me, actually. Um, I know that sounds ridiculous because I've gone by one. 
but I just literally wandered around the whole expo. It's Down my favourite day to do that. Vi- every single aisle, saw everything I wanted to see, picked up a couple of bargains. Yeah. You know, I got those games from Aries. Me and Becky spent most of that morning just wandering around yeah. together. It was yeah. really nice. So really chilled, really nice. Felt no pressure, no time scales, no nothing. Yeah. So yeah, really pleasant day. I would just like to say, I think I'm looking for more. I know what I'm going to expect next year, so I'm going to have much more fun next year as well. Because I don't yeah. know what to go demoing. I know how to sit tables. I know what to do next year. Yeah. It's, it's hard, isn't it? it? Like, the first time you go, you're not going to do everything. It's like, what's the social contract that you enter into yeah, when you it. wander around? Like, yeah. do, do you like force yourself to say, can I play? Or is that going to piss people off? Or, or yeah, yeah it, it, you're trying to find your feet, don't you? What's yeah. accepted? Even, what isn't accepted? Even things like, how did the shop, shop and drop work? How does the bring on buy work? And the website was okay to a certain extent, but didn't quite tell you everything. And so you kind of, for someone like me, you can get a bit like, ah, oh, how does this work? Yeah. The Friday was my navigate everything day and look for bargains basically to buy, which I did nearly all of my purchasing on the Friday. I did very little on the Saturday, and I think I only bought one item from the bring and buy on the Sunday because I was, as I was walking around, I was like, that's a bargain, I'll have that as well. Like, you know, but yeah, I totally agree. What about yourself, Becky? Um, yeah, I think the Sunday when you're just wandering around looking at, um, I think probably not games, so game adjacent stuff, looking at all the cool dice, looking at all the artwork bling. that's there, all the, yeah, all the tasty bling, because yeah, if you, if you wait till Sunday to buy your games, you possibly aren't going to get what you want, because a lot of stuff was sold out this time, wasn't it? Um, so I think I probably did most of my actual purchasing on Friday. Mm-hmm. probably and then the top up you know paint bling little nice jazzly bits on the saturday and sunday because mm. that's when you're wandering around but yeah i just it's just so friendly and i really like chatting to the stall owners and but then i'm that person that when you're having a taxi ride i sit in the front and chit chat with the driver so you know it's not a surprise that i like going and wandering around and yeah it's just you bump into your friends and they oh what have you seen over there oh i've seen this and then you toddle off and find it it's just been really good JP, yours is Dan, isn't it? Yours is Dan, hanging out Dan, with Dan. Dan, Dan's my new best friend. <laughs> um, no, I, I, for me, I'm a, I'm a social animal, uh, and what I've really enjoyed this year is actually catching up with loads of people. Uh, as I said it earlier, I really enjoyed meeting uh, David Turtsey. That was probably the highlight for me. I yeah. Was like, yeah. It's so amazing, um, but also just catching up with with people like on on you know the, the board games of Instagram. Um, and the various social media uh, kind of accounts that. Oh, yeah, Board Game Jimmy, we saw, didn't we? Board Game Jimmy yeah. came and stopped with his family, and that was quite nice to catch up with him for a bit. Uh, as I said earlier, I met uh, Mark Dainty from Not Board Gaming. We saw uh, Johnny from the Hexy Beast. Um, trying to think of others that we potentially saw, but loads of people were just, you know, really friendly, really nice to stop and chat to. And I think going to like the, the, the press or preview event on the Thursday, it just helps you network a little bit more with other people. Yeah. And I really enjoyed that. Um, Cause as I say, it was our first time kind of experience doing it. We, it's a bit like going to the expo for the first time. We didn't quite know yeah. how everything worked, what you're supposed mm. to do. Were you supposed to interview people there? Were you supposed to meet up with them later? And you know, there's no hard and fast rules with these things, but we know now. You could see a general trend in that so certain people were getting interviews, but for the most part, it seemed to be rearranging, like arranging yeah. for for later on in the weekend and exactly. catching up with people. So, so that for me was just spot on, and I think it's the same as it is all every year. Is this socialising and hanging around with me mates and just having a laugh and just being silly? <laughs> to be honest, which I did plenty of, and I enjoyed it. Just, yeah. just going to the gaming rules event. Yes. So we went to the show in the afternoon yep. on the Saturday, played just one with Paul. Yeah. Uh, we went to talk about defenestration. Defenestration. Thank you, whoever threw that one in, made us look really intelligent. <laughs> it was funny. It no, was funny. Like... But yeah, never heard of that word before. I had no. to Google it afterwards to make sure that people weren't just winding me up. Yeah. I had heard about it and I was sort of sitting thinking about it afterwards and I think the only word that you could have given as a clue would have been window side. I'd, yeah, it wouldn't have worked. Well, I, I would, if I'd have been on the game, and someone said window side, I, I did know that word. But you was in the audience. I was in the audience, yeah, so I couldn't you, have helped shouting out. it up would yeah. have been cheating. Yeah. But, yeah. but in all honesty, like, you know... <laughs> That's it's just a laugh, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. It is, it is a laugh, but yeah, that defenestration no one was ever getting at. No. <laughs> we'll play that. I think that was the it's, point. It's never going never gonna to be a guess. <laughs> Just got set up by Paul. Do you two want to guess this next yeah, word? Yeah, yeah, stitch, like, stitch is yeah, right up. Thanks, mate. Tough one. 
time. Yeah. <laughs> but again, just met people there that I'd spoken to on, on Paul's Slack channel. Yes. On the Patreon Slack channel and just, oh, you're such and such, you know, yeah. and putting a name to a face and all that kind of stuff was just, yeah, just great part of that networking and talking to people who you'd sort of knew a bit remotely and actually getting to say hello to them properly was fantastic. Yeah, I think it's kind of like Expo's a good time to catch up with your old friends and people that we, we've met along the way through this this hobby and industry and also a great place to meet new people. So like we've met some new designers that we've not really spoken to before and now, you know, next year we'll be checking them out just like we did this year. We popped to see uh, uh, Jack and Paul and Eurydice Games do Flick Fleet uh, just to kind of say hi and how's it going and, and things like that. and. And I think, yeah, it's, and again, Chris Priscott from, you know, Unfringed. And it's just nice to catch up with people, see what's happening in kind of their lives and how their games are going. And, yeah, oh, yeah, and Adam from Punchboard. Yeah, it was nice yeah to catch Adam, up with him. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, we will have forgotten to say people's yes. names. We're apologising because it was just a crazy weekend. We've all taken as many notes as we could remember <laughs> to take, but we will have forgotten someone if we have, sorry. He was laughing at my granny trolley. And I don't blame him. Well, he wasn't laughing at it. He was, he was... Yeah. Mildly well, impressed. Yeah, pointing it out. Is it? Yeah. If, but I, then... if I'm honest, the granny trolley looked awful. Don't like, even it was care. So useful. <laughs> Don't even care. It was so useful. Uh, style so useful. is not as important as board game acquisition. Hashtag I'm... granny trolley. <laughs> <laughs> you mean style is not the goal? <laughs> style is definitely not it the goal. Definitely functional. <laughs> I, 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 it was incredibly functional. One of my favourite moments is like because we had to switch hotels from the Thursday to the Friday. Uh, we. <laughs> Me and Becky had the, the fun job of basically transporting the uh, uh, the oh, games, uh, clothes, bags, and everything to the, you know, the, the hotel, Ibis. the Ibis. So we had to get the uh, the air rail link thingy, the monorail. And Becky had a rucksack on her back. She had a rucksack on her front. She had a bag in each arm. <laughs> and the granny trolley was, I don't know, attached <laughs> to a bag somewhere. And I looked uh, like a pack mule. You did. You looked like a <laughs> yeah, pack mule going but, to Everest. But we did it, didn't we? We did. Um, Sweaty, we were yeah. back by 5.30 to do the... Um, Take the, the stuff out of the shop and drop. Yeah. yeah, shop yeah. And drop. So the shop and drop's great. My advice with that would be get there as soon as you can in the morning. First you pay your £3, which is non-returnable, but it's three quid it's totally worth it basically that kind of entitles you to fill a box yeah with your bags that you get a number around. yeah you get like a little like a cloakroom ticket and you could just keep going back and i you know it felt like a little bit like a lending library so i'd go in with clank and whatever oh can i swap this for earth it's in the box and she just takes that away and then brings earth to you it's great Really good. I would agree though, try and get there early. Just put a bag in, put a box, a game on its own, just one yeah. game in there, get your ticket. Because on the Saturday morning, I was trying to take a game out of the shop and drop, and the people behind me were turned away because there was no more available spaces. So they had to go to, and there's a shop and drop, I think, in every hall. There certainly wasn't yeah, two there was, and three. There's yeah. one, two, and three, yeah. Um, and so they had to kind of toddle off and try and find a different shop and drop. I learned from last year and went there straight away. Yeah. But last year they'd all fold up. You just couldn't do it. They just didn't have the capacity no. to, to handle it. So I guess there. they upped it this year, I yeah. guess, um, because I didn't hear about people being turned away quite so much. No, yeah. I, I bumped into people who'd been moved on hmm. and they didn't have their bags on them anymore. So I'm guessing that they managed to get a box yeah. <laughs> in the shop and drop. <laughs> so leading on to that nicely, I guess, is the bring and buy sale. I didn't, I didn't really en- you know, engage with it much. I went in once and came out. Uh, that was my whole I think I bought which is odd for you yeah yeah I was a lot more restrained this time mate yeah. a lot more restrained I've been bought three games I could carry them in one hand I mean this that is, was that is restrained yeah. 11 last year Becky had wasn't 11 <laughs> it was 11 <laughs> I think it was because you it, even said to me I think it might have been me, 10 because I think one of the games we bought from Ben I don't know you sat us oh, down and went through every one of them okay maybe it was 11 <laughs> <laughs> you were so excited I was excited yeah. you had to even yourself out otherwise you'd have teetered over I was yeah. a weeble's wobble yeah. yeah don't push me too much in the wrong direction <laughs> I'll be tipped over but your experience is quite different of that wasn't it Adrian yeah. so I was trying to sell through the bring and buy so we did the press bit we did I said I'm going to get away early so I can get my stuff in the bring and buy. I've seen most of the publishers that I wanted to see and spoken to a few people and I'm now going to head off and so did uh, Davey. Ran back to the car, loaded ourselves up with bags. Again, I feel like one of those little trailer things was because people have done it before and know that lugging those bags about is not comfortable. It's Hence not nice. the granny trolley. <laughs> um, I had my shopping trolley, uh, not my shopping trolley, me, um, I had my suitcase at one point and even that with another bag over the shoulder was just not enough we nearly get to the queue 
and uh, we're not going to get through the queue now by 11 o'clock on the Thursday evening. Go away. Basically, like they were a bit nicer than that, but essentially they turned us away and just said, you're probably not going to get in. Now, it turned out they did open it again slightly later on. They got through them a bit quicker. Um, so did that. Then Friday morning came back and queued for about 40 minutes. I was lucky because I'd already got my ticket, so I was able to get there early. I got there pretty much for quarter past eight, I think it was, 20 past eight. Got in the queue, queue opened at nine o'clock, queued for about 40, 45 minutes. About an hour later, they put out a note saying that the bring and buy is now full. They're turning more people away. Um, and then they reopened it on Saturday. Now I went into the bring and buy on the Saturday afternoon to have a bit of a look at what I wanted to purchase, if there's anything in there. And the shelves were two thirds empty by that point, as they were on Sunday as well. Sunday, by the time I got in there to go and get me money out basically, and the couple of games that didn't sell, which again, most of my games sold, I priced them well. There was some, as Kelly alluded to earlier, there's there's some crazy pricing in the bring and buy, um, but they were still sat there on the Sunday yeah, afternoon. So right, so it's down to, it's down to you to kind of price what you think is appropriate. If you're happy for them to not sell it, then it won't sell. Um, but yeah, went and collected my things and the shelves were like two thirds empty, half empty at that point. And yet they'd turned away people earlier in the Friday, earlier in the Thursday. Davey never went back in with his. No. It was one of those where it felt like they'd either just not scoped for the fact that people were going to cut, turn up with 100 games plus at a time. Roll cages. With roll cages full of games, which a bit crazy, and there's been a lot of discussion about that online and what how to deal with it and not or whatever, but I'm not going to... It's not for us to It's not for us to discuss, it? really, no. I don't think. But, um, yeah, it just seemed crazy that they were having to repeatedly turn people away, and I'd queued up. I'd say I'd walk to the car and back. That was half hour, then walk to the car the next day and back. Another half hour plus a 40 minutes in queue for a bring and buy. Bring and buy took me two and a half hours, in my opinion, to to put games in. If it was my choice, I would say don't have a bring and buy and open it up for more open gaming. Um, but it's not my choice. See, I, so. <laughs> see, I like the idea yeah. of the bring and buy. I'd put games into smaller conventions that hadn't sold and yeah. that did sell at the expo. So I got rid of nearly all of my games that I'd had. So I was grateful to put it in. There's just something, dare you say broken, there's something that didn't work for the bring and buy and, and again talk online suggests that I'm not the only one with those feelings and it was a small blot on what was otherwise a wonderful expo yeah. so it didn't ruin my weekend or anything crazy not going to blow out of proportion <laughs> it was just an annoyance of the expo I mean the thing is that, that I guess we need to consider is the fact that this was probably quite an unknown year for them yeah because of Covid it was kind of the first year back after Covid last year wasn't it absolutely and um, yeah it was a little bit smaller and they probably didn't know what to expect this year so i'm guessing if they were going to invest in a in an extra hall it might be next year yeah i, I say i don't know the logistics of it or anything they'll totally appreciate that it was a smaller expo last year and that you know certain companies were talking about that they had a lot of stock left at the end of last year and then the same companies this year are saying that they sold out yeah so i think that tells you the difference mm. between the two years and yeah how underprepared through no fault of their own the expo could be for things like this it is just as say i just wanted to mention it because it's getting a lot of discussion online and it was something that personally had affected my expo experience mm -hmm. yeah. but not enough to say don't ever go to the expo no, or anything no. like that. Like, i still absolutely loved it but yeah just just a talking point i suppose mm -hmm. my only gripe is the price of the ice cream <laughs> 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 I, I don't have any other gripes at all yeah. But I think eight pounds for two scoops of small ice cream, and it was quite nice ice cream. It was all right, but you know it was like your supermarket brand tasting ice cream, which is fine. But I think eight pound made me a bit sad. <laughs> <laughs> there were there were expo prices. Yeah, but absolutely. It's exactly what you'd expect. Nobody forced me to buy ice no. cream. We Nobody about forced year, me to buy we? ice cream. It's like. But this year we were more prepared. We took food with us, didn't we? We kind of packed yeah. some yeah. snacks and stuff rather yeah. than relying on buying snacks somewhere else. I'm glad I did, considering I bought me and Dan a burger and chips each and the fries were like £6 each. They looked nice fries, but They were good, but not £6. But, yeah. <laughs> but, but like you said, I knew it was going to be like yeah. that. Whether it's acceptable or not, it's a totally different question, but it is just the way it's it is. Relevant, they, like, they had a queue most of the week yeah, at those food stands, so it must be acceptable. Yeah. There, <laughs> is, acceptable. there is free water you can get. I mean, I think that had sort of, it wasn't working on the no, Saturday afternoon, but it, it was working again on Friday, on, this, on the Sunday. Yeah. 
um and you you are right near like there's a there's a like a londis in the area so it's not like you have to buy the londis wasn't too bad no i, I mean yeah it's is a that, lot cheaper than the expert it's still it, more expensive it's the same than as my the supermarket corner shop in the village yeah, exactly <laughs> exactly I, I bought a three pound sixty bottle of two litre pepsi max which is ridiculous right yeah. but the way i figured it they were charging about two pound 20 two pound 30 for a 500 mil bowl so it's like well you might as well you? might as well because yeah. that's that would be like flipping yeah. eight quid or something you know so it was still <laughs> much better value yeah. to do that it was just you had to buy the bullet and yeah. do it i still maintain like we, we said it last year and we, we did it definitely this year is like make make a point of having a meal like make, make a point of Try not to make food this functional thing that you're just shoving down your, yeah. your necks mm. for 20 minutes mm. so you can carry on gaming and actually take time for it. Yeah, and that was um, really nice. You get away for a bit. You're kind yeah. of all sitting together. You do have to book it in advance, but because of our experience last year, we knew to do that. Yeah. So we'd booked stuff that we could book. And um, yeah, it was really lovely, wasn't it? Mm. It's just nice to, to look forward to it and chat and do the things that... Or chat about things you don't normally do because you're playing games all, all day and all and weekend. You, you guys went back to game after most meals and I was like, nope, I'm done, I'm you tired. You were done anyway. Like, yeah, no, yeah. again, that sort of, you know, the things that I've, the, the overstimulus and all that kind of stuff of an expo meant that I knew I needed to get the sleep. And so that was the choice I made yeah. to go and get sleep and be happy the next day. And, yeah. and meant, well, yeah, just, you know, recharge the batteries yeah. and all that kind of yeah. stuff. But there was plenty of people there that were gaming till 11, whatever, whatever. Well, we got shooed out at... at well, it was, after, night, yeah. it was after midnight on the Saturday night. We were getting chewed out. We were pushed out by the cleaners, weren't we? Yeah. yeah. Uh, just, just to let you know, the uh, the the hall three is going to be finished in about five minutes. Okay, we better finish clank then. Um, and then literally, you had to get uh, some stuff from the car, didn't you? Well, I must say that, that <laughs> really it, I would say I would say it annoyed me because it didn't. But it's like the shuttle back to the hotel ran till half twelve. Right? Yeah. So we left the expo at quarter to twelve, thinking, right, we'll nip back to the car ten minutes, get back, and come twelve, they were trying to kick us out. It's like, well, no, the the monorail over there, which is in your NEC, yeah. runs for another flipping twenty five minutes, mate. It's because it's, it's train adjacent station. to the train station, not, it's the, not the NEC. NEC. Yeah. Oh come on! Yeah. <laughs> no. How else do I access it? <laughs> By the train station. Through the train station. <laughs> the walk to it. Great. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, the, you, we, me and Becky uh, had a chat to the security guard, didn't we? Yeah, he was really, he was really lovely. Yeah, 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 yeah. He just wanted to make sure he didn't lock anyone in yeah. or yeah, okay. not lock something. So he I was want just to go like, home and I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just think if the expo's closing at twelve and the monorail closes at twelve thirty, just kick everyone out, but then make it available in twelve twelve thirty. Yeah, I don't think that's enough. We got it. Just, it was yeah. fine. I know, but it was way more hassle than it needed to be. <laughs> let's be honest. <laughs> I think me and Dan were nearly up to a mild jog at one point. Like, oh my God, this is not what I'm built for. <laughs> that just about wraps up our expo exploits um great year was had by all again and um we'll definitely be there next year as much as we can and uh, we'd love to see some of you there as well so come and say hi if you see us um if you've enjoyed the show please like subscribe and review on your podcast player of choice they're available on all of them if you know someone who might enjoy the podcast we'd like to ask you to share us with at least one person you know so that they can also take a turn with us if you want to get in contact with the show, we're on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok and Board Game Geek, or via our email with details all in the show notes as per usual. We'll be back again in a week with another one of our regular episodes. So until then, whose turn is it? Cheesy bangers. <laughs> Cheesy bangers. <turn. laughs>